करते हैं बिस्मिल मेरा नाम हसन सैयद है और मैं स्पायर पाकिस्तान का फाउंडर हूँ और स्पायर पाकिस्तान एक ओवरसीज पाकिस्तानी की नॉन प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो स्टार्ट तो ओवरसीज पाकिस्तानी के साथ हुई थी लेकिन बहुत जल्दी उसके अंदर पाकिस्तानी जो मेन लैंड के ऊपर पाकिस्तान में रहते हैं वो भी शामिल हो गए और हमारा जो विजन है पाकिस्तान के हवाले से वो बहुत ही सिंपल है कि अल्लाह का दिया सब कुछ है पाकिस्तान के पास कोई ऐसी चीज़ नहीं है जिसकी हमें कमी और अगर हम प्रॉस्परस नहीं हैं तो उसकी वजह सिर्फ और सिर्फ हमारा एक्शन की हमारे एक्शन की जो कि राइट डायरेक्शन में हो सही सिमत में हो उसकी कमी और लिहाजा वो तमाम लोग जो ये बिलीव करते हैं कि अल्लाह ने पाकिस्तान को सब कुछ दे दिया है और अब हमने एक्ट करना है उन लोगों को हम इनवाइट करते हैं कि वो आएँ हमें ज्वाइन करें और हमारा ज्वाइन करना बिल्कुल आसान है और इसकी कोई क्या कहते हैं अपना मेम्बरशिप फी वगैरह कुछ नहीं है जो लोग ज्वाइन करना चाहें एस्पायर पी के डॉट और जाके वो हमारे बारे में पढ़ भी सकते हैं और ज्वाइन भी कर सकते हैं एस्पायर के नेटवर्क के अंदर बहुत सारे ऐसे टैलेंटेड पाकिस्तानी हैं जिन्होंने दुनिया में अपनी सलाहियतों का लोहा मनवाया और जिन्होंने बेसिकली ऐसे काम किए जो हम सोचते ही हैं कि क्या, क्या पाकिस्तानी वाकई ऐसे काम कर सकते हैं और इन लोगों ने ऐसे काम किए तो उन पाकिस्तानियों को लेके वो और उनके एक्सपीरियंस को लेके पाकिस्तान के पास एक अपॉर्चुनिटी है एक बहुत बड़ी अपॉर्चुनिटी है कि हम उनको पाकिस्तान के मुस्तबिल के अंदर शामिल कर सकते हैं आज की तारीख में जिस दुनिया में हम रह रहे हैं उस दुनिया के अंदर जो काम है वो नॉलेज इकॉनमी का है और नॉलेज इकॉनमी के अंदर फिजिकल प्रेजेंस जो है वो इतनी ज़्यादा मैटर नहीं करती है इंटेलेक्चुअल कंट्रीब्यूशन इंसान दूर से भी दे सकता है इन तमाम पाकिस्तानियों में एक बहुत बड़ा नाम हमारे साथ डॉक्टर आजम अरस्तू हैं जो प्रेसिडेंट हैं एपेक्स कंसल्टेंट के और वाइस प्रेजिडेंट रहे हैं ये बोइंग कंपनी के स्पेस एंड डिफेंस सिस्टम डिवीजन के पूरी दुनिया में इन्होंने लीड किया है कई कंट्रीज़ के अंदर इन्होंने स्पेस का प्रोग्राम स्टार्ट किया बोइंग के बिहाफ के ऊपर इनको 25 से ज़्यादा अवार्ड्स बोइंग से रॉकवेल से नासा से यूनाइटेड स्टेट एयरफोर्स से डारपा से ईएसए से यूरोपियन स्पेस एजेंसी से आईएए से और इंक्लूडिंग नासा हाइस्ट अवार्ड माशा इन्होंने हासिल किया और ये बोइंग के टेक्निकल फैलो हैं ए आई ए एसोसिएट फैलो हैं इन्होंने स्पेस स्टेशन के अंदर एक मेजर रोल प्ले किया पिविटल रोल प्ले प्ले किया जुपिटर आई सी मून ऑर्बिटर जो मिशन था उसके अंदर इनकी कंट्रीब्यूशन हैं जो फ्यूचर मैन मिशन है मार्स के जेम्स वेब टेलीस्कोप है और सेटेलाइट कॉन्स्टलेशन हैं न्यूमरस स्पेस प्रोग्राम्स के अंदर इन्होंने कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट किया है और मेरे ख्याल में पूरी दुनिया में पाकिस्तानियों के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से ही इज़ द लीडिंग पर्सन जो जिनके पास एक विजन है पाकिस्तान के लिए जिनके पास एक ऑब्जेक्टिव है जिसको लेकर ये आगे बढ़ना चाहते हैं और आज की जो हमारा प्रोग्राम है उसका मकसद डॉक्टर आजम अरसू की लीडरशिप में ये डिस्कस करना है कि आखिर ये सब है क्या आ, ये सारा स्पेस की दौड़ क्या है क्या हो रहा है हमें आ, पाकिस्तान को क्यों इस रास्ते पे चलना चाहिए पाकिस्तान कैसे चल सकता है पाकिस्तान इसमें कैसे अपना मुस्तबिल ढूंढ सकता है और इसमें जो दूसरे पाकिस्तानी हैं जो अब आप, आपको इंट्रोड्यूस कराएंगे आजम आ, वो क्या कर रहे हैं इसी स्पेस के अपना इंडस्ट्री में और वो किस तरीके से कंट्रीब्यूट कर सकते हैं तो विद डैट मैं कोई बहुत ज़्यादा लंबी चौड़ी मेरा प्रोग्राम नहीं था बस डॉक्टर आजम और को इंट्रोड्यूस कराना मकसूद था यहाँ से डॉक्टर आजम जो हैं वो इसको संभालेंगे लेकिन ये कि बीच में इन मौका मिलेगा तो मैं कुछ सवाल ज़रूर करूँगा लेकिन सबसे पहले मैं चाहूँगा कि आज़म आपने अपने नाम के साथ अरस्तू लगाया हुआ है <laughs> और यू you नो know, तो ये आपको नाम दिया गया या आपने खुद लगा लिया 
तो जरा हमें बताएं इसकी इसका बैकग्राउंड क्या है और स्टार्ट करें अपने प्रोग्राम को थैंक यू एंड आई वेलकम यू इन इन दिस प्रोग्राम एंड अप्रीशिएट ऑल द यू नो कंट्रीब्यूशन जो आपने अब तक नेशनल आइडिया बैंक की लीडरशिप के हवाले से एस्पायर के साथ किए तो प्लीज गो है थैंक यू हसन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर टाइम इंट्रोडक्शन आपने सवाल किया इसको मैं जवाब दूंगा बट सबसे पहले तो मैं सबका शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ कि एंटायर ऑल दी ऑडियंस ऑलमोस्ट सौ के लोग करीब के लोग हैं इस बार सुन रहे हैं इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक है आई होप यू कैन विल ऑल लर्न अ लॉट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक सो लेट मी स्टार्ट विद योर क्वेश्चन ऑब्वियसली आई कैन नॉट पिक माई नेम इसकी वेरी ब्रीफ हिस्ट्री है वेरी वेरी ब्रीफली uh my grandfather a great grandfather was uh, was a nawab of hyderabad um, hyderabad dakkan mein he was the supposed to be the most learned member of nizam's inner cabinet so nizam used to give titles for uh, like the most learned member would be arastu yarjang bahadur yarjang defense minister and and so on so he was given the title for us to yarjang and uh, because being a personal physician and the learned member of the inner cabinet so that's how the family name has started uh, is arastu and we we are uh, one family and but uh, almost all members of the family are professionals vast amount of doctors lawyers um judges and so on so puri family is uh, we are focused on education and 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 professionalism so that's the brief so fact. you are living up the name i don't know about that but uh, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe choice is easy but uh, uh, that's the background so um great thank you and you've given a little bit of background about myself so i will not go into any more details about that but what i will do is to uh, talk about let me just ये जो टॉपिक है हमारा टुडे जेम्स वेब टेलीस्कोप के बारे में ऑब्वियसली जेम्स वेब इज द इज द न्यू किर ऑन द ब्लॉक आजकल इज अ लॉट ऑफ टॉक ऑन ऑन टाउन ऑन जेम्स वेब बिकॉज इज अ वेरी वेरी इनक्रेडिबल इमेजेस दैट वी आर सीइंग एंड बिल्कुल गेम चेंजिंग पिक्चर्स हैं जो स्पेस से आ रही हैं और बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन जो हमें बेसिक साइंस के हैं कि हम हैं कहाँ कहाँ से आए हैं कहाँ जाएंगे कितनी बड़ी दुनिया है what is time what is energy what is matter where where is all going to end how big is the universe all these are fundamental questions of science and jo jo uh, just the tamam scientists are uh, finding out and james webb gives a next in uh, uh, another pinhole into this vast ocean of science and is providing some very very cool answers so so जेम्स वेब के बहाने से ये बिकॉज ऑफ दिस टॉक ऑफ टॉक तो पीपल हैव बीन आस्किंग मी टू गिव अ टॉक ऑन दैट आई सेड बेस्ट थिंग इज के लेट्स टॉक अबाउट जेम्स वेब आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सपैंड द डिस्कशन वेरी बिट मोर एंड सी के ऑल और क्या हो रहा है स्पेस प्रोग्राम्स के अंदर देर हैव बीन अ फैसिनेटिंग डेवलपमेंट इंडस्ट्री इन स्पेस इन लास्ट सिक्सटी सिक्सटी ईयर्स एंड लाख लाख शुक्र है कि मैं एंड आई कान थैंक इन ऑफ uh to my lucky stars ke i have been part of more, almost all major iconic space programs jo hain from space stations se lekar <coughs> to return vehicles and then uh, future missions to to mars uh jupiter missions and then also have spent many years in commercial constellations so we'll touch upon all those programs talk about uh, james webb also and then uh eventually we'll turn back hamara main maqsad ye hai is this point ka ke all that is good so what what is in it for pakistan hum ab isko pakistan ke liye kaisa wave kar sakte hain we'll move into that discussion but before i do all that i i, I have been uh, going around to figure out aur kon kon pakistani hain jo which i know in at least in us jo who are part of the space industry and i have been able to uh, get a group of people here <coughs> some very interesting uh, people so I, i'm going to uh, bring them in first of all introduce each one of them very briefly um, 
and uh, let me start with um, an astronomer, to, uh, Dr. Uh, Salman Hamid. So Salman is uh, actually an astronomer, and not only that, he has uh, is a PhD in, uh, in in astronomy, and he also has a YouTube program, which is 45,000 following. On I don't know how many of you have seen that. He is the one who runs that. So, uh, Salman, you're online. If you can spend a, a minute or so just to introduce yourself. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Or uh, your uh, introduction ka bhi, or ye jo effort hai, I think uh, this is amazing. Uh, and to me, just thoda sa main introduction de do. Main meri PhD jaise apne kaha astronomy mein hai. Jo mera focus tha, wo is cheez ke upar tha ke sitaro, jo galaxies hain, kya kya shay hain, usme sitare kaise bante hain, star formation kaise hoti hai. So it was a pretty straightforward observational. Maine jo dunya ke baat sare telescopes vagara jo hain. वो इस्तेमाल की और और अब जो है पिछले कुछ सालों से मैं ये वीडियोस भी बना रहा हूँ कायनात स्टूडियोस के अंदर और उसमें आइडिया ये है कि फैक्ट्स वगैरह की बात ना हो बल्कि क्यूरियोसिटी बिल्ड करें आखिर तो एस्ट्रोनॉमी जो एक बड़ा अच्छा फील्ड है जिससे लोगों में साइंस और खाली एक जनरल so I'm going to put this uh, link in the chat. I see actually two Salman Hamids. I think I'll put the bracket in the bracket so that everyone can know. And I'm a professor at uh, Hampshire College, uh, Massachusetts. So please, uh, thank you so much for uh, this effort. Ka, and really looking forward to participate in it more. Thank you so much. Um, another... Uh, a uh, friend and colleague is uh, <clears throat> Shaina Soni. So before we move on, Salman, if you can you tell us which part of Pakistan are you from so we can sh show the association with Pakistan? Because I was in Karachi, I was in Karachi, I was in the Inter Tech Mahaprata, BBS Parsi School or DJ Science College. So I was in shock, I was in Karachi. Se. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so next is Shaina Soni. She's been with Boeing for many, many years, and uh, uh, <clears throat> she's done a lot of hardware software integration with Boeing, worked a lot on space station. And then she worked on, uh, uh, she's working on <clears throat> many uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 rocket launchers. She worked on missile defense. So now she's, still, she's worked with, again. So let me, uh, uh, she's really working on, on, on large heavy lift vehicles, SLS, and Vagara. So Sonic, uh, Shainaz, if you can spend a minute. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, my name is <coughs> Sony. Um, Azam just contacted me a few days ago. I'm sorry, am I supposed to speak Urdu? Is that like the requirement? No, no, no. I'm comfortable. No, no. I'm not going to do Okay. I'm not going to do Urdu, so I'm not going to I am from Pakistan, Karachi, and um, um, currently I'm working on human landing system program. And the program is all about taking the woman to walk on the south side of the moon first, and then the colored man. And it's supposed to, uh, we're actually starting the first launch in in few days for the Artemis one. So it's a series of Artemis. And the interesting thing about Artemis is that we did the Apollo mission to go to the moon, which is like a twin brother. And now we're doing Artemis to have a woman to walk on the moon as like a twin sister. So there is all these Greek mythology that NASA is using, right? Uh, Name-wise, it's very exciting. I have worked on many different rockets and missiles and pretty much that has been my career all my life. And I did come from Karachi, Pakistan uh, through arranged marriage and not speaking English. So it's been quite a journey. And because of that, I'm also writing a book if anybody wants to know about that. <laughs> but I'm excited to be here and I'm very happy uh, to be in the group of all the people who have contributed to humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Shanaz. Uh, <clears throat> Mustafa, are you online? <coughs> Mustafa Farooqi is another person who has been working for Space Station <clears throat> many, many years. And he worked, then he worked for Boeing, satellite division. And he's working now on, again, SpaceX 
uh, on, again, rocket launch is different. Right? So he's not online, but uh, <clears throat> uh, then Tarek Mirza, are you there? Zakir Mirza, I'm sorry. I think you're a little bit And uh, Hassan, uh, Sayyid Hassan. <clears throat> no. What about Himayun? You're working for Godard. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I'm now Humayun Arif. I'm not actively in the space program. But I've worked for 10 years at NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. And I've worked in the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. So I've started in NASA Glenn. I'm a mechanical engineer, thermal yeah, my uh, specialty is in the structures, and then I became a program manager. So I had to head microgravity payloads for space shuttle. Then I had a cryogenic spacecraft, tha, uh, cold set. It was a thermal lead. Then I became a brand chief in the structural uh, um, analysis in uh, uh, NASA Glenn. Then I went to NASA Goddard. Chala gaya. Koi, I think midlife crisis was that I had space projects in space projects. वहां मुझे टेस्ट डायरेक्टर बना दिया एक स्पेसक्राफ्ट था ट्रॉपिकल रेनफॉल मेजरिंग मिशन एक जॉइंट मिशन था नासा और नासडा जो जापान की स्पेस एजेंसी है तो इंडियन डॉलर स्पेसक्राफ्ट था जो जिसने लानिनिया का इफेक्ट डिस्कवर किया उसके बाद मैंने रिजाइन कर दिया वहां से मैं इंडस्ट्री में आया और सिस्को में आया सिस्को की मैंने रेडिएशन हार्डन राउटर्स फॉर सैटेलाइट यूज और चाहा के Ethernet or IP protocol join space me use on those Kelly a boy in case I'd be come here as I'm sorry man I was part of the project constellation team Cisco at our Ryan Kelly or us now NASA so much like he's other now Boeing so much like other advantages of using open architectures and yeah ITK platforms so anyhow of my TNT Kelly come Carol Mera Taluk thank you so much you know really good thanks for joining us so Let's continue or uh, let's continue with the program or uh, what I can do is as we go through, we'll in, uh, I will bring you in for comments and interjections of uh, any speciality, especially uh, Salman, I'll, when I talk about the interpreting the results of James Webb, I think there's, you, uh, instead of me talking, I'll have it to you. And Shanas, uh, when we talk about SLS, the heavy vehicles, I'll get your uh, input. <clears throat> and similarly with you, Umayun. So let's move on. And <clears throat> what I'd like to do is to share some slides. Uh, hang on a second. You, can you, uh, you can't, let me see if you can share my slides. <clears throat> All right. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. So, so let's start, uh, and I'll start with the background, history select. So, history of it, uh, we will, since the discussion is really on astronomy and space, we'll, did, we will keep that as a main theme, but we'll diverge on uh, other areas too. Astronomy has been uh, a field which is which has excited humanity from time immemorial because people like to gazing in the stars and try to figure out uh, what where we are and so on. So throughout the history, you know, there have been many many giants who have discovered all kinds of sciences, and astronomy has been a pivotal played a pivotal part in all of them at the beginning. <clears throat> but in this in this history, the contribution of Muslims and has been incredible. Uh, uh, we have, it's, uh, <clears throat> there have been a number of uh, Muslims, especially the, during the golden ages, who have contributed incredible amount in astronomy and not only astronomy, but all other sciences. These are some of the big names that you see all the time. I will not go into each one of them. You all know the contributions of each one of them and so on. But this list would, I would not, I don't think it will be complete if I don't include uh, 
it would include two names. One is Professor Salam, <clears throat> and of course, Dr. Kadir Pakistan. Ke. Pakistan and Professor Salam, I have been very, very fortunate to, for, to have Professor Salam as also my professor of physics when I was doing my uh, master's and degree and my, my PhD at Imperial College. He was my professor of physics, and I had a lot of association with him later. Incredible, incredible scientist, and what a treasure we have for Pakistan. And he did his his work was absolutely fundamental. He was also the founder of Suparco, 1961. But Suparco was one of the first few space agencies. I think one of the third third space agencies in the world uh, that was formed after NASA. Then, of course, Qadir Khan. I don't have to say anything. He's he has done wonders for Pakistan. But the journey for me started with Apollo, <clears throat> not because I worked in Apollo, but as a 15-year-old kid in Karachi, uh, when 1969, the, uh, I think Karachi mein TV came in around that time, 68 or 69, mein aaya tha. and I had a little, this, uh, the black and white TV, tha, and I remember as a kid watching lunar landing on the black and white TV, and I, I can tell you I was mesmerized, literally mesmerized by that, by that whole Thing was completely out of, uh, it was impossible for me to even imagine that these things can happen. So that created the spark on, for me to do space exploration and go into space business. And now looking back, I can't imagine I've managed to do all those things um, in my life. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the next thing uh, that came in in the space program was space shuttle. After the uh, Apollo program, they said, well, we have to have a more permanent space. So they, they created a uh, shuttle program, which was <clears throat> started in uh, 1972. And the idea was to have a reusable space uh, asset, which will reduce the cost and so on. <clears throat> so they ended up building five uh, shuttle vehicles and we launched uh, more than 135 missions on this. And the idea was to make it cheaper and faster for resupply missions to space. It, it actually ended up with almost each mission cost us 450 million per launch. And the turnaround time was almost four months. So this was really not a very efficient way of going to space. So, but it did wonders. It did uh, a lot of work um, so on. <clears throat> then came the, uh, so I came to the United States in 1989. And I just came and Boeing won the space station contract. So I came in at the, literally on the ground floor. Where as soon as they won the contract, I came in at that level from a proposal stage and, and building it. <clears throat> so space station is when uh, <clears throat> I got my feet wet, literally, uh, as a, in the space uh, world and tried to contribute my, my work on that. So let me tell you play a little video, what this, this space station is all about. And I'll also go into what, I, what my contribution has been on space station and so on. Space station, as you know, is one of the largest uh, space observatory <clears throat> orbiting the earth and it's still operating. It's fully manned. Uh, there are crews from many countries operating. It's, it's, it's actually flying very low in what is called low earth orbits, so only about 200 or 250, to 300 miles from us, and it orbits in this kind of uh, uh, place where it is. It tri tries to be in sunlight. Okay, so here is the um, a little brief audio uh, video on space station. <laughs> the International Space Station an unparalleled laboratory for cutting edge research unachievable in Earth's gravity for the benefit of all humanity. An observatory for Earth's evolving climate. A beacon of international collaboration. And our home until 2030. As the station enters its third decade, it is busier than ever, developing technology for human exploration missions to the moon and Mars, finding new ways to combat disease, and acting as a testbed for in-space manufacturing of advanced materials and new medical products.
Humanity's future is an ever-expanding team of nations and companies enabling exploration together and for the benefit of all. The International Space Station is a critical step on a great journey ahead to the moon and beyond. Okay, so space station, uh, first of all, uh, let me tell you, I'm not an astronomer, I'm an engineer. So I like to build things. My PhD was electrical engineering from uh, London. So uh, when NASA got this contract, Boeing got this contract from NASA, it was one of its kind. It was, uh, it was supposed to break new grounds in almost every field. And you know, you, nothing has ever been built like this ever. So. They needed, they got engineers and brains from literally every part of the world to come together and build this, this massive uh, system. This whole space station is, is almost a football size. Literally, uh, you can put one football stadium, you can put that, in the, so it's as big as that. And <clears throat> the, the, the power system of this is, it had to provide almost 90 kilowatts of power to the users, but the arrays uh, had to produce almost 250 kilowatts of power. Can you imagine producing that kind of power? This is way back in 1980s, uh, 89, early 90s, Kendra. So they're using that te technology. My power background was electrical systems. So I was responsible for putting the whole power system design, architecture, development, design, uh, testing, all the way to on orbit operation. So I, that was my major contribution to the space station. Uh, put not only the solar rays, the batteries, all the electronics, and the integration of it with the rest of the system. So electrical power gets to everything. Um, this uh, the space station um, literally had to be built uh, because you can't put this build the whole thing together and launch it. So it had to be put together in many different pieces. And it took almost 100 shuttle flights to launch each piece together and put a Lego, like a Lego set, and you assemble the whole thing in space. So look, it was a massive space construction pro project. So, and the other thing is, it took almost 15 years to from the beginning to the end for the completion. So, so the first part was already in space 15 years before the, uh, the last part was uh, going there. So you had to think through all aspects for, uh, you know, for the history of the program to, to uh, build it. Extremely complex. <clears throat> so there were, uh, here is a kind of breakdown of all these elements. So you know, these are the two, four very big power elements. Each of them were quite independent. Um, and, and then each, each of these gray dots uh, seem to be the habitation modules. And, 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 the, and also uh, there are different color schemes because uh, US, Russia, uh, Japan, Europeans, Italians, and, and, and all of them had different aspects of, and Canadians, of course, uh, put different parts together to put the whole thing together. It's a massive, massive engineering task and it's still working. Uh, the life was supposed to be 15 years, has gone through many times. We have upgraded the system many times to, to improve. Now we, can, we have extended life to 2030. So it's gone almost 25, 30 years over, over the design life and still working fine. But the cost of the system, the launch, now what has happened, the shuttle has gone. Shuttle has, so how do we resupply missions? To, so, so we said, okay, we'll, NASA then gave a contract. They wanted, didn't want to be in space transportation business. They gave a contract to both uh, Boeing and uh, SpaceX to do the resupply. So there was a commercial uh, crew transportation program where both these companies were given contracts to say, okay, we, you deliver an astronaut, we'll pay you X million dollars. And they said, we'll give you $58 million per astronaut when you take them to space station and back. And similarly for the cargo. Compared to 450 million per shuttle flight, or when you give it to Russia, it was costing us $81 million. <coughs> so 
So both these programs are now working. Both um, Boeing has a system which is uh, goes in a rocket, uh, and uh, and the the crew goes into a, a, a silly self-contained uh, flyer, which is like something like an Apollo capsule, but very much modernized. And I also had worked a lot on the design and testing of this particular um, crew vehicle. Similarly, SpaceX, SpaceX went uh, a stage ahead. They not only used the, the launchers, they uh, not only use the launchers regularly, but they also have now uh, reusability. They actually bring the launch vehicles back and reuse them for many things. This is, which is again, a game-changing technology that they have brought together and has, has reduced the cost significantly. Both of them, they also have a Dragon vehicle, which is a space capsule. So now, Space Station, without having a um, shuttle, we have two different ways of taking astronauts and bringing them back from station. <clears throat> so again, this is another area where I did contribute uh, from Space Station. <coughs> next thing is, we, next thing that is happening here is going bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of launch vehicles. For, to go anything further than Space Station, Space Station, as I said, is lower it's only 200 miles it's literally like entering the door but space is so vast if you want to go to moon these vehicles will not work we had to develop new vehicles but for apollo program boeing uh, developed or nasa developed saturn 5 rocket which is seen here it's one of the biggest rockets ever developed at that time now after so many years we're developing another rocket called SLS, space launch system sls block one and uh, Shanaz, you said you, you have been working on this particular rocket. This is our next uh, uh, vehicle that will take us to, to Mars, to Moon, and all other future missions, because you can take heavy payload and go up. They can go up to. So similarly, Falcon X has got, they've got a very heavy, they can put 140,000 pounds of weight, which is more than twice shuttle could carry. And they, and the, but the cost, you see, look at the cost. Cost of shuttle was 100. $100,000 per kilogram, whereas the cost in for Falcon Heavy is less than $1,000 per kilogram, almost a factor of 100, uh, two orders of magnitude reduction in cost. Similarly, uh, SpaceX is developing another giant rocket called Starship to go directly to, to Mars. So very exciting things happening here in terms of major big, big launch vehicles. But US is not alone. <clears throat> US is not alone in this game. Uh, there is a lot of need to put a lot of heavy equipment stuff in space. So all of the companies, you, all of the countries, especially Russia, China, uh, also uh, there is a, you know, the Japanese are coming in with a heavy lift vehicle. Indians also have a he lift, heavy lift vehicle version. So there are a lot of com uh, countries coming in, for, uh, bringing this capability to for heavy uh, uh, launch, and we'll see, we'll hear a lot more about them uh, in, in, in the future time. So let's now talk about some deep space missions. So those are the, what is called the near Earth missions. Going further, what we have been doing <clears throat> up till now to understand deep space, we've been sending robotic missions, which is called very small missions, which were going primarily by JPL to go to uh, to all other things, you know, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Uranus, and we looked around. We, these are a space, very small spacecraft, very little power. We use mostly what is called radioisotopes, uh, radioactive, which is only provide almost hundred watts of power, literally hardly anything. But they have provided some very very useful data. But that was not to future space exploration. That is not the way to go. So. 10, uh, and about 10, 15 years ago, we said, okay, we want to go to Jupiter. Uh, NASA had a program to say, let's go to Jupiter and explore the three, what is called the icy moons. Jupiter has icy moons. Uh, one is, uh, which are uh, Galisto, Ganymede, and Europa. Europa specifically is about the same size and uh, very much similar characteristics as Earth. And there's also water uh, on Earth, uh, on Europa, and also on Ganymede and Callisto. But Europa, we expect to have some liquid water. So 
we believe that in our solar system, if there is any other place nearest to us where it could, there could be life, could be is Europa. So the idea was to go to this mission. But Europa is a moon of Jupiter. It's one of the 22 moons of Jupiter. And Jupiter is almost five times away from, uh, um, it's like from, from, from the sun is, sun to earth is one AU, one is five times the distance from, from here to the sun, which means the round trip of, uh, it means it's really, really far. So conventional vehicles, there is no transportation vehicle. None of those rockets will uh, be able to take us there. So we had to develop some new technologies and basically come up with a nuclear power uh, station or go with an electric propulsion system. So we did, I, I spent another three years defining this, I was system architect of the whole mission. Um, but this mission was very complex, required very, uh, it went into very high radiation environment, developing nuclear electric propulsion, nuclear power up to giving up to 300 kilowatts and going so far like the, uh, uh, it, the duration of the trip was almost nine years by the time you go from here. So, so there were so many challenges. After spending almost $150 million or so, we shelved this program to say, no, that's, uh, we'll leave it for some other time right now. A lot of technologies need some further development. But it was, we learned a heck of a lot during this time. So <clears throat> let me move as I will not. So then we said, okay, you know, to go, to go nuclear has got all kinds of issues. So is there any way we can use solar and advanced solar systems in the solar technology and yet be able to fulfill mission? I would like to have a system which is, can give me about 300, two to 300 kilowatts so I can use the electric propulsion and, and go all these places. So we developed all bunch of uh, technologies to, to do that and a lot of spacecraft concepts and these are giant sol built solar arrays, which are all collapsible, build it into a very small package and unfold them and build some concepts to go to, to Mars um, and, and, and various asteroids and, and also to, to Jupiter, basically to, to Europa. So some of these missions or some variants of these missions are now being tested. They're actually flying. There's a mission to Jupiter already on its way, built, tested, and we, we got some very cool results coming through on that. So this, but what, what, you, what I wanted to do was to build very, very large vehicles. And the idea was to create a, a, a structure of uh, these vehicles where we can do, you know, plan a whole transportation system in this space. So that's, so I spent several years of my life at the end of my career developing these concepts and technologies. Now we will, let's move into the topic of the day, which is space telescope. Space telescopes is not my area, but I ventured into, as I said, astronomy is not my area, but uh, I, I got involved into it, where it when, when they had some issues in terms of engineering issues and how to build things, how to come up with the solution where we can put these, these telescopes together. So <clears throat> the question that has bugged humanity from our beginning is, where do we come from? How old is this Earth? When did this happen? How, you know, the two basic concepts in creation versus uh, evolution, you know, you're relig keeping religion as into a side. <clears throat> there are, we have we just a fundamental question which is bugging every person from, from time immemorial. What we all know is the universe started with a, the Big Bang. Big Bang, and from what we know so far, it started almost 13.8 billion years ago. And after that, uh, but we have been able to, so we want to figure out how we would go back in time and see how these things happen. And we need, we need tools, we need telescopes to go back in time and see where these things are and how, how these things happen. And, and also, so if this is the big bang and you know, things, the universe kept on inflating, if we are at this point here, the question is, okay, where do we go further? How it's going to expand? So we need to know, we need to, we need to, to looking at the back, we can project what's going to happen to us in, in the next uh, few hundred, uh, hundred of millions of years from now. So to, to see this, um, <clears throat> just to understand that we use nature and nature shows that everything that we have is 
is electronic waves. There are waves, radioactive waves, all information, all energy, all everything is, 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 can be converted into electromagnetic waves. And if we have means to tap into that electromagnetic wave set centers and, and see through those, I would say, pinholes and see, get information from this side. So we, a lot of telescopes are being built. First, uh, <clears throat> if you look at this, this electromagnetic spectrum, uh, the, the extreme left-hand side is the gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet rays. Then comes a very tiny sliver in this whole electromagnetic spectrum, which is called the visible, which is what we see. And so what we see is only this particular part of the spectrum. So Hubble spacecraft was built uh, to go and probe into and see into this invisible spectrum. It had a little bit of eye infrared, but primarily uh, Hubble's, but, and Hubble showed some remarkable, remarkable results, uh, <clears throat> even in that spectrum. But the imp interesting thing was to go into infrared because uh, visible spectrum blocks a lot of information. And I'll tell you, tell you in a minute about what, how you can get away with it <clears throat> and, how we, and wh why how it's so important to go into infrared region to see things which are not visible and not seen in this so, so a lot of information. So Hubble <clears throat> then came the James Webb telescope. What we wanted to do was to build a telescope, first of all, large enough and cold to infrared. The biggest thing is you need to build your sensors very, very cold. So you can see the coldest, very cold signatures. The, so you, the colder your sensor, the, the, the more accurate, more data you can get. <clears throat> But before that, uh, a Spitzer tele uh, telescope was also launched. The Spitzer was also in IR region, but it was very small. The, the aperture was only 30, 33 inches or so. It's very small compared to uh, Hubble and uh, James Webb. So let's talk about both Hubble and James Webb. <coughs> the question about Big Bang is, how big is the universe? How is it expanding? And so we have been uh, uh, the... Uh, there have been a, what is called Hubble constant, which shows how the universe is expanding. And we have we found that it's expanding faster than we had expected. So it's actually accelerating. So that came the concept of dark energy. The whole concept of energy, the dark energy is because it's the, it, it defied what we knew if we took up the energy and matter, it did not fit the equation. So there was something else happening. So that is called dark energy and dark matter. The spirals, uh, uh, the, the galaxy is also rotating faster than we think based on gravitational forces. And maybe um, <clears throat> uh, Salman can throw more light on it uh, if you go on. <clears throat> so this dark energy is actually, there's, there's a lot of dark energy and dark matter. In fact, majority of universe is made of dark matter and dark energy. So only 4% of our universe is composed of what we call normal matter. <clears throat> so Hubble telescope was put together. This was way back in, I think, in the 80s and 90s, it was launched. And uh, uh, it was a smaller one. Uh, the diameter of this Hubble telescope was about two meters. Total length was 13.2 meters. It could be fitted into the shuttle bay and launched. Uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, sorry. Um, let me go back. So the aperture door is simple things, but the, uh, it was basically, a, a, as I said, on an invisible spectrum, but having a 2.4 meter aperture provided a, a, a marvelous telescope it, and it provided some absolutely incredible images, incredible images for the last 20 years or so, we, you know, scientists have been glowing into this, these the images that you see here uh, on the right, all uh, show, shows for the very first time, this formation of the stars, we can see the, we can see beginning of time, we were going almost 400 million or 500 million years after the Big Bang. <clears throat> so we can go back to that time. But still, because it was visible spectrum, visible spectrum gets blocked because of dust and cloud. You need something to penetrate that, and the IR penetrates that. So 
Similarly, uh, Spitzer gave some wonderful pictures. Chandra was an X-ray, but these are very low resolution, very very low resolution pictures uh, because of the size and technology. Then came <coughs> James Webb. So James Webb took almost uh, 25, 30 years to build. Um, very ambitious program. The idea was to build a large telescope which could go very, very cold so we can go into as low end of the infrared as possible. The biggest problem was to get a sensor which was down to almost, uh, I mean, original goal was to go to seven degrees Kelvin, which is almost absolute zero, which means uh, absolute zero is uh, my, uh, zero degrees uh, uh, Kelvin. So you're going down, which is minus 276 degrees C. So you wanted to go that cold and create anything that cold is not an easy thing to do. This, this posed a tremendous amount of engineering challenges. How do you create an instrument, put it into space and maintain that, that core? So we had to come up with this very unique spacecraft, <clears throat> which has uh, this very uh, unusual kind of thing at the bottom, which is basically <clears throat> uh, a sun shield. So if you look to the right-hand side, this thing is the sun shield that you see. On this side, the temperature is 185 degrees or 85 degrees Celsius. This is where the sun comes in and you had to block this heat and put the instrument on the other side and, and to create a uh, cold side, which is minus 388 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius. That was an absolute engineering challenge. Uh, and this shield was almost like a, a table tennis, uh, no, sorry, a, a tennis field. It's about as big as that. Not only that, we had to create a, a reflector, which is six and a half meter in diameter. <clears throat> and so we have a huge collecting area, which is almost seven times as large as the Hubble. And because of this cold attitude, uh, uh, thing, we can have infrared sensors, which are really taking us to very, very cold areas. So if you look at the spectrum here, the Hubble spectrum was in this part. Whereas Web, James Webb spectrum goes into several areas of several uh, regions of infrared. So you can really see some very, very, you know, faint objects into this. Not only this, that another major uh, <clears throat> technology challenge was to park this satellite so far off that you're, you know, for example, Hubble was right next to Earth. So Earth is hot because of reflections of sun. So you cannot make it cold anyway. You have to go away from Earth in an area which is cold, away from Earth, Moon, and no other planetary objects. So, and and we, not only that, if you want to put it there, <clears throat> so far off, you want to be able to do it in, in a way where you don't need extra fuel to keep moving and uh, making sure that you keep um, a spacecraft in this position. So, you, the, there is one place in space, which is called the Lagrange point, where space the, the 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 gravity fields of earth and and sun and other planets get neutralized so basically this is the sun and that's the earth you, you see the at, at these points at l2 uh, at these places these gravitational forces get neutralized so if you have a spacecraft there basically there is no other pressure up there so the idea was to place this satellite in that particular orbit on the other side of the moon facing deep space, so uh, you can always, you'll always have uh, vision to the deep space and not getting the cold part of this thing. So that was another challenge. How do you build a system and launch it there and take it all the way up there and park it and manage it? So incredible amount of te te technology challenges that were put together. So this, <clears throat> so <clears throat> my contribution, I did work on, uh, on this one. On, uh, there were a couple of major areas. One was when we built the spacecraft, they had a, you know, because of the complexity and it took many years and they had a fixed launch vehicle, which was an Ariane launch vehicle at that time, which was limited. The spacecraft became too heavy, too massy. Plus there was no, not enough room in the fairings to put a solar array or power system. And I was developing some very cool um, solar technologies, a very advanced kind of solar arrays, flexible, high power, very unique with all kinds of things. So I, they asked me if I could develop, design a new type of array, which will help them 
which will bring this spacecraft back into uh, the fairing and, and, and be able to do it. So which is what I did, created a very interesting new kind of array, very lightweight, and be able to power the whole system and actually manage to close the design on this. So that was one big contribution. Plus also, as this was rotating and there were some forces happening, there were some stability issues on the whole spacecraft and for momentum balancing. So created some new ideas and having a new momentum control device, which uh, eliminated a lot of extra energy and power that to be used. So there were a couple of other major technical things that I did, which really closed the design. And I'm, I'm glad. And the very first thing that I had to open, very first thing that I had to open to have for the space space cap was to have the solar array deployed. That was the first. Without that, the whole mission would have died right on day one. So uh, I rested in peace when that happened and worked flawlessly right off the bat. <clears throat> And also the thermal system is now working absolutely beautifully. So the other major challenge was how do you build and test this? We had to have big enough test facilities to test all this thing on ground. So we built some very facilities and tested, this tested almost 15, 20 years to on every aspect to build this thing and working fine. So now that is the engineering part. Uh, uh, So the, the technical challenge was this whole space car had to be fitted into this little fairing uh, on the Ariane 5 rocket and then unfolded this complex. And it had almost 350 single point failures in this unfolding process, which is unbelievable. I mean, normally in space station, we, we don't have, in fact, most space car, we avoid even a single point, single point failure is not acceptable. So here we had 367 of them, so we all had to be successful. So finally it did work. So anyway, that is the space car point. So what, what do we get out of it? So here are some very first few images that we saw. If you look into the sky that we see, 
the first few images after unfolding the uh, the antenna uh, the uh, telescope was we saw this amazing pictures of Carina nebulae and then this is a very small area uh, uh, in space and uh, there's a very interesting cluster of galaxies and which was also observed by uh, Hubble. So we looked at that area. So there were some uh, exoplanets that we looked at, some uh, another cluster of galaxies, well, there were five of them up there called Stephen Clinton, uh, Qu Quintet. And there's another uh, southern uh, uh, nebula here. Which is, so which we looked at them, uh, which we knew existed and uh, from Hubble looked back. And this is the pictures of the, the SMAX uh, 0723 uh, in, uh, uh, galaxy cluster. These pictures that we got from, uh, from here with just almost uh, six hours of seeing that in that particular area was absolutely stunning. The pictures, we had a similar picture with Hubble, but almost uh, nothing in compared to the detail that we see with this one. And this part of this, um, it's a very, very, very small area in sky that we are looking at, but look at the number of galaxies and stars that we see each and then them. So now if you look at uh, like this particular one, this is a galaxy that's warped by gravity. This is another spiral galaxy. Um, and then, um, okay, so uh, how, the question is, how do we know how old is a galaxy? How, how do we find the age? So here is we use a simple Doppler uh, effect, uh, which we all know, we learned in physics many times ago, that the, the frequency shifts with the object is coming near or going away from us. So if you're, you're standing here on here and the object is moving this side, this, these uh, waves will really get compressed. So this is, these are called the blue shift. And for this guy, the, the, the waves get elongated, so which is more of a red shift. So, so here, we're using this kind of phenomena to see if the, if the galaxies are moving away from Earth. So the, the, the shift, if you look at the same, if, this, if the, the spectrum of this galaxy is here, you will see them moving to the right. And this, by measuring this red shift, we can estimate how far the galaxy is. So that is what is called. So redshift is used to measure the galaxy. And then also if we have a spectrum, so we take the spectrum of this, uh, this thing and break, taking the spectrum gives us what is made, what kind of information can we get? We can see if it has carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, uh, et cetera. Or, uh, so by coming up with these spectrum, we can also, so combining these two, here is a very interesting chart that, that came up. So looking at the same SMAX uh, 0723 ga galaxy cluster, we saw uh, at least, we can actually look at about, about 100 of these simultaneously, but four of them are shown here. And these are different galaxies. And by looking at the redshift, we can say this one is 11.3 billion years. This is 12.6 billion years, 13.0 uh, billion, and 13.1 billion years. So this is literally almost 700 billion, uh, 700 year, a million years from the beginning of the Big Bang. So this is probably the oldest that we have seen. In fact, we've probably seen a couple of more which are even older than this recently. But this is the power of the telescope. And this happened only seven, within a day, basically uh, seven to eight hours of integration and, and measuring, you can see all this data. Incredible, incredible. The, the phenomenal results that we get on this is you know, mind boggling. Similarly, Carina Nebulae, um, and again, I'll go fast on this and uh, uh, maybe I'll have uh, uh, this Stephen's Quintet and there are five uh, uh, very interesting uh, galaxies. And then this is Southern Nebulae. We can see one of the dying stars here. It will just learning about dying stars. We can understand what will happen to our stars when we, you know, we are, we are about 400 uh, 4,000 uh, 4, 400, uh, 4, uh, million years from now. So and what happens to us when we go to, uh, when we start, our galaxy start dying. Then another thing that we learned is exoplanets. There are almost 5,000 exoplanets uh, in, that we know of, that we already know. So we can, you have instruments that we can figure out by measuring the light and also the measuring the dip in light and looking at the spec spectrum, you can figure out what those ex ex uh, exoplanets are, how big they are. Not only that, we can, by 
by doing a spectrograph, we can figure out what is in the atmosphere of them. So there's one of them here called WASP 96b that is found. We, we already see a giant uh, uh, gas exoplanet. We already have got a lot more details uh, on this than we knew before. So uh, fascinating, I've just shown a, a very tiny glimpse of the results that have come up and the each of these pictures will generate millions of research papers and so on. And I'm sure uh, Salman um, would, would gloat in, in each of these pictures and because as, as he's an astronomer himself and his field is the stars and galaxies and aging of those galaxies and so on. So uh, <clears throat> let's now move me very, very quickly, move to commercial space programs. Space is basically a, almost a trillion dollar industry. And uh, uh, it's going to be by 2020, 2030. It's already almost half a billion. And, and there are thousands of satellites coming into various orbits that are being put together. So what, what is happening is space exploration is one side, but actual near Earth um, space infrastructure is a, a, a massive economy that, that's going through. Uh, and, and almost every company has been uh, coming into and playing into this thing. And basically what's happening is instead of major countries only investing in space, now it's, it's energy, it's space is democratized. So it's good uh, available for all companies. And so they're all coming up with all the Leo and uh, Mio constellations, all communication platforms are moving, moving into. Um, uh, and, the, and this happened because there's almost uh, one or two orders of magnitude cost reductions that's happening into the development of these satellites, launch vehicles, ground systems, and so on. One big change is the advent of what is called the CubeSat. Instead of having this giant three-ton, four-ton, five-ton satellite, now everything is miniaturized, just like the power of cell phone that we have. The computing power and force that we have on cell phone is many, many times than large computers. So having CubeSats has also democratized the space. And <clears throat> And uh, it's made, it, this is made available to every country, even down to schools to build a satellite, to launch it and put some payloads onto it and get, and the launchers are many, many, there are many, there are many options that are available to, to do this. And, and this, and there are a lot of satellite constellations that are coming up. <clears throat> and um, in this field, what I've shown here is mostly an American, view of things. So NASA by far were dominant in the last many years for space exploration and led the whole space business. Europeans came in, but uh, space exploration also started with Russia, uh, but for the funding and so on, US has been as, as number one. That is no longer the case anymore. <clears throat> The uh, uh, Europeans have also advanced, Russians uh, have, have a big one, plus Chinese. Chinese have now invested in space in an amazing manner. They have they built, uh, they built their own space station. They have a full space infrastructure. They've got, there are many, many companies. They have satellite manufacturers, um, um, satellite operators, uh, both in LEO and GEO. Uh, they've got a whole bunch of uh, um, launch capability. So they have a very vast network of both commercial and uh, government, and they have a full developed entire ecosystem. Uh, and this was recent. <coughs> they have their own space station, which is actually very capable, it's got a lot of cool features in this. They have a, a huge family of launch vehicles. Um, they have their own GPS. They have a, a last manufacturing of small uh, and uh, array uh, satellites. And the investment, as you can see, is the, the launches that you have, uh, is just going exponentially. So with that, we turn to a question saying, all that is good. So what is in it for Pakistan? We are seeing that all this space exploration is going TK, that's still uh, an area that is required and has asked a lot of science questions. But at the same time, there's a trillion dollar industry that is there, trillion dollar. 
uh, from, compared to us, uh, we had a space uh, program which started in 1961. Uh, India, ISRO started in 1969, and India is now almost the fourth largest space agency and space country in the world. They have, so we have a long, long way to catch up. And if we don't, and I think one of the basic message from this seminar is to light some fire with the youth of Pakistan to say, come on, this is a fascinating technologies. Come on into it and work and develop and help uh, build these technologies in Pakistan. So, um, Hassan, the, I, can I continue two, two, three more minutes on this? And, and uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, segment. Mein hai, so please go ahead. Right. So, so ground and so Pakistan, how do we get into um, what things that we need in Pakistan? So let me, I don't need to be on the. Uh, stop sharing with this. So again, I see in, for Pakistan, we have, we have to have, uh, there are three, three segments in, 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 in space. Uh, basically, there are four areas of space that we need to develop simultaneously. One is the whole space policy part. Space policy means space laws, hai, governing requirements, hai, um, uh, insurance, hai, all those legal aspects that provide uh, this thing, plus uh, space policy, uh, which, which provides the industry, government industry partnership and so on. So that framework has to be done. And that is something that has to be done jointly with industry as well as, as, uh, as government. But there are three other areas which can be done by private sector. One is, you know, if you divide space, there are three areas. One is space, which is called the space segment, which is basically the satellites. <clears throat> Second is the launch vehicle part. How do we take your spacecraft to orbit? That's a whole new business. And I don't know how much of that is done. In fact, in private sector, I know no work has been, has been done in Pakistan. So we need to have commercial launch capability in Pakistan. And, uh, and no matter how cool you are, no matter how many spacecraft you can build, if you don't have your own ride to space, you are at the mercy of somebody else. And when you're at the mercy of somebody else, you can't do much. So launch capabilities, commercial launch capability is absolute key in that area. So spacecraft, launch vehicle, and the third part is ground infrastructure. When you take this information, bring it back to ground, how do you make the ground segments? And is ground segments go, uh, ground infrastructure, poor ground control systems, taking the information back and disseminate to all kinds of users. And users could be uh, our agricultural department, our education department, our health department, our meteorological department, our water resources department. All these uh, uh, things, they, they are the users of this information that's coming through. So there are many, many technologies, many areas specifically in, in these things to be able to to where private industry can build pieces of the pie. And just like many other countries are doing here, um, filling up individual niches. Then there is a, uh, this, this is the industrial part. But to do that, the fodder for this whole thing is human capital. How do we build human capital in Pakistan, which will provide the material, the fuel to fill the space uh, economy. And Usme, I think that is the first step that needs to be done. The, us, that's where we need, uh, I would say at least every major province has to have a center of excellence created. Maybe one center of excellence for spacecraft or space segment will be in one area. Uh, another would be for maybe launch vehicles, one area then maybe for a uh, ground segment, maybe another one for remote sensing uh, areas, another one building ground infrastructures, your transponders, uh, all kinds of things, and the, and the computer networks that go through. Again, we need some to center of excellences and then have programs with local universities 
uh, which which provide uh, that that technology and use the maybe the graduate level students coming into that and and working and and work and developing that human capital. <clears throat> also, localize that. Yes, Hassan, you have a question. I think we are going going ahead of time. So. Uh, is that the is that the signal, Hassan? I think we are gone over the time. No, no, no. Have continued. Signal, no. Okay. Acha. So I, I think. I think. Anyway, I think I'm. I'm going to. Uh, so that that framework is something I have been working on, and I would like to. You know, I'm developing this, and also then roadmap road mapping of technologies. How do we go? Uh, five year plan, ten year plan, fifteen year plan. How do we? incrementally grow into into various sectors and the coolest thing that we have now is to go with the, the small sat focus on small sats cube sats and these are very cheap and it can be developed and in the universities and and they come in kit forms so you develop them and they're not complicated most schools have uh, built uh, uh, cubesat facilities here another key of this whole development is to have international collaboration I, I strongly believe that uh, collaboration with the um, emerging countries, specifically China, uh, specifically uh, our friendly countries, UAE has put, put in a lot of money, almost $5 billion they have put into their space programs. So they have, uh, uh, so we're collaborating with them, with the Turkey, and then uh, creating this a zone of uh, countries in that, friendly countries, and maybe have center of excellence between us so we can focus on certain sectors, maybe some use some share, some test facilities between them uh, to build this infrastructure. So <clears throat> I, I think this is one area of technology that we cannot afford to stay behind and, and miss and really need to work to, 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 to look forward. So I think I'll end here. And now I'll, I'll uh, just have, uh, Maybe Salman, come and just maybe expect for two, three minutes to say, again, talk about uh, Hubble and, uh, sorry, uh, JWST and, uh, and the astronomy part. And maybe I'll ask Shainas to talk about the launch vehicles. Sorry. Um, uh, thank you. I don't have a camera on. I'm going to try it. So, without camera. All I can say is, uh, I mean, you summarized it well. Uh, I will just add a couple of things. Ke, uh, ke astronomy is, is a really a gateway science. When you are talking about these things about space, how to think about it, how to build, how to use human capital. Well, human capital has to be inspired. And I think if you look at these images of Hubble Space Telescope or James Webb Space Telescope, I think it forces you to think on a big scale. And it also brings you up to questions that leads to sort of like, you know, curiosity. So just to give you one small example, like, you know, that you showed sort of like the extrasolar planet, exoplanet, and it had sort of like squiggly lines. So squiggly lines are not very exciting. All the other pictures are, colored pictures, but those squiggly lines are the ones that are telling you what is the atmosphere of that planet around another star is made up of. So it is such an amazing thing. And we were never able to do that before James Webb. I mean, we had maybe one or two, maybe just a little bit of hint of uh, atmosphere around exoplanets, but James Webb Space Telescope provided this uh, with, uh, with a great example. And we have more than 5,000 exoplanets. So putting it, I mean, I know this is not about astronomy, but I would say these are the type of things that can excite young folks. I myself got interested because of Carl Sagan's Cosmos that was shown. And then I ended up doing a PhD. You got interested because of Apollo landing. Exactly. I think James Webb Space Telescope is going to lead to more people getting into it. So I think we can use this opportunity actually to build up on uh, on building curiosity and having Pakistanis getting involved in sciences, uh, and not just sciences, but in space sciences and astronomy. 
Wonderful. In fact, uh, your your and your series of YouTube videos are are amazing. Plus, you also talked about uh, the museum that you helped building in Pakistan, the science museum. Uh, can you talk about that? Yeah. So, uh, if people are not familiar with that, and I'm surprised actually, people have not uh, many people have not heard about it. But in Karachi, at I I Chandragarh Road, uh, there is Magnificent Science Science Museum or Magnificent Science Center, which is built by the Daud Foundation. If you haven't checked it out, please do. It's three floors, really high quality stuff over there. It started last year, so maybe because of pandemic, people are not familiar with that. But there are kids lined up, and it's for adults as well. I was telling, um, uh, actually, when I was uh, talking to you uh, before, that it has sort of like you know for kids, but it also has stuff like how to think about calculus. It has stuff about how to think about magnetism, sustainability. So one of the wings that has not opened, it will open in 2023, is on astronomy. So we are helping them what kind of exhibits they should be there. It's a long process. I've been really impressed with working with them because there are engineers, there are technical people over there, and we tell them, okay, hey, look, these are the specifications we need, and they have been really responsive. There is another one on climate change that they are also building, but already there is couple of floors that are fantastic over there. You, if you go there, you will easily spend three, four, five hours and it's a lot of fun. So please check out Magnificent Science Center on I. I. Chandrika Road in Karachi. It's amazing. It's the whole idea is to bring what is what I call twinkle in the kids' eyes. And I, the space does it. Space is, a, it creates, it brings the imagination out. And then, then many flowers bloom. They can go into various fields uh, of uh, science and technology. But for a country like ours, STEM education and STEM education begins with this dream. And you, you, have, you should provide the dream uh, that should happen. I was also talking to uh, uh, Salman about, uh, you know, Azim Kidwai. I remember as a kid, I used to read his articles in Dawn regularly. And so those are things that were done, very subtle things, but it provided a lot of incentive. So I think, I don't know how much of that is done, but that's, those are the kind of things that we do to start. The, that's the beginning of the human potential uh, process. Thanks. Yeah, if, if, I can, if I can just add one other thing, Azim, you brought in Azim, because like, these are the small things like your newspaper should have a science column. Yeah. After Azim Kidwai died, he was never replaced and we don't have a regular science column, for example, in Dawn or any other major newspaper. Same thing, Cosmos was shown on PTV on prime time in 1980s, that impacted things, right? So today we need programs that are there on television or on internet, but that is accessible. So I think that's the key element. Otherwise, you just don't know what you don't know. You don't know what opportunities are out there. Thanks, Alman. I agree that Cosmos PTV originally released with the Cosmos and then it came in a dub Urdu world. And I remember, of course, the first one I was fascinated and I watched the whole thing, Carl Sagan, and then uh, the Urdu version uh, helped a lot of people to understand the uh, universe going on. So part of it is also. Uh, younger generation to inspire them translation english language context videos i I commended on him because it's hard to go Urdu me uti ravani krasna bhot mushkale, but he does a very good job. So I highly encourage everybody to watch your show. Please, on YouTube, Kainat Astronomy in Urdu. You will get the videos. Please check out Kainat. Okay, so let's move on to launch vehicles. So Shanas, you have, you know, I know you've done a lot of work on launch vehicles and, and now also with Boeing and then SpaceX, etc. And now you're doing the very large vehicles. But how do we how do we start small? Do you have any ideas? Okay, before we go to this giant vehicles, we have to have some baby steps. We have to be able to start making small sat, small space uh, uh, vehicles, and then and then move to one. So, uh, can you share any light on on that? What do you think 
uh, how we can develop that part? Yeah, I, I like to share light on so many things, but before I do that, I just wanted to say that Hassan mentioned about action for Pakistanis, and I'm all about action because that's the only way we're gonna do something good for ourselves and for others. So please uh, count me in, in uh, the committee where you are looking for mine to help you create some strategy there. So that's one thing. I'm very happy to meet Salman, who's doing all this amazing work for Pakistani and the Science Museum and so forth. And uh, just like you guys, I was inspired by black holes and things that were completely not even in, uh, in the textbook when I was growing up in Pakistan, which is the reason I have followed the path of becoming who I am today. And going back to when, uh, so Azim, you did a great job in showing the history of space. And the very fact that the space is going to become a trillion do dollar, tech, you know, like a Economy. technology, right? That's a pretty big statement there. I mean, if you think about it, money is pretty much how uh, the world is controlled right now. And if the space is where we're all headed, then we truly need to bring space home because space should not be looked at as it's too far. And it's, you know, it's like, it's part of us, right? Because I mean, you know, like you were talking about the red shift and how we're calculating distance between galaxies and it's just really, it's amazing. So going back to the launch vehicle, right? So right now we're taking some baby step in a very different way. So Artemis one launch is coming up. I think it was supposed to happen soon. So that's the first baby step because we are trying to build it to go to the south side of the moon, partly because when you were showing the Jupiter video, you know, for the icy moon. Yes. So basically because we have a crater, right? On the side, south, south side of the moon where we have discovered the icy water, which is why we want to leverage that to create the sustenance, right? To, to live on moon and then ultimately go to Mars. And 2030 is the deadline for all that too, which ties to the whole thing about space commercialization and all that. And it's so interesting, the launch that I'm working on right now is that we have space launch system that's built by Boeing. Then we have Orion that's built by European Space Agency. That is where the astronaut will be in the capsule. And, and then we are rendezvousing at the non rectilinear halo orbit, which is where we're gonna be meeting the Starship made by SpaceX. Yes. And then the idea is that astronaut will be passed from the Orion capsule to the Starship. And then we're taking them to the moon and then we're performing all the experiments and, and I'm part of all that because I'm uh, part of that one mission and then all the mission following that to go all the way to Mars. So it's, it's a lot of fun because we have to brainstorm so many things every day. But I hope I answered your question. The way we are doing it is we, we are taking Artemis one, two, three, four. These are the flights that are building up to create the sustenance on the moon and then the Mars. And if anyone has any question, I am more than happy to answer. No, that's good. No, what, what I was trying to to allude to Shanaz was to say baby steps in, in terms of how we can leverage our experience in building a series of uh, vehicles in a stepwise function. And so we retire the risks at each level properly. Uh, so how we can learn those lessons and build a, a, a roadmap for Pakistan to build a series of launch vehicles that we build first this capability, retire some risk, then go to the next level, you know, block wise way. So, uh, over a period of time, rocket business is always a risky business. You know, there's a 10% failure rate given in almost every, there's no, um, almost one in 10 uh, flights uh, are, um, you know, burst into flames in the initial few years. So that is given. So, but you right. have to build it in, uh, design that in, but with the law, we have to have a roadmap, which is 10, 15, 20 years from now. And without that roadmap, we, nothing can be done. So, uh, that roadmap needs to be done. And I think what I'll do is when I start putting the roadmap for launch vehicles, I'll, I'll get some help from you yes. to put those things in. Right, because you know, as a system engineer, right? Because technically as an engineer, you are always a system engineer just by default because you have to go through all this learning like A to Z, right? You don't get to Z unless you truly understand how you took that path of going from A, B, C, D. And I think when you were explaining about the International Space Station that was built on 100 flights, I mean, just think about the imagination there. The fact that, we, and not only that, it's international, which means we have to deal with a whole bunch of bureaucracy from so many different countries, right? But we did it anyway. So the fact that if you're thinking about, if you put all our heads and minds together, right? We have so much brilliance. Uh, I mean, as a Muslim, right? Khalil Gibran, I mean, we had all these incredible Muslim people who came in this world and for whatever reason, we have been going through some dark 
uh, you know, we are kind of like in the darkness and dark, we need to come out of it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm all for helping build the systematic way of doing things because it's one step at a time and that's how you build it. You have to create a confidence. And at the same time in parallel, you have to teach children to truly not think of space as so, some far-fetched idea, but bring them home in a way that everybody can live in a Star Trek world. I mean, that's my dream. That's a very good point to end on. So it's not a space is not that far fresh. That's a great note to, to end. And I think I like now there are some hands there. Let me take some questions. So, uh, Asan, you want uh, to say something? Um, Asan, ji, ji. Two things. One thing is that the vision that you are talking about is really, really important. Because vision has to be something like a collective dream not uh, you know just one person but all of us dreaming together so your dream is important hai is in the space scientist ke saath saath humko jo kya kehte hain apna creative minds hain unko bhi sharik karna chahiye jo kya kehte hain philosophers hain unko bhi sharik karna chahiye ki hamare paas ek aisi vision ho jo sab ki kya kehte hain apna collectively buy in ho jiske andar और दूसरी बात ये कि इसमें 3D प्रिंटिंग स्पेशली क्योंकि हमारा बहुत बड़ा एडवांटेज ये है कि हमारे पास कुछ नहीं तो हमारे पास कुछ ना होने की वजह से वी कैन एक्चुअली लीव फॉर टेक लीव राइट एंड वी स्टार्ट फ्रॉम यू नो विद नो नो बैगेज नो बैग एनी काइंड एंड इन देयर इज 3D प्रिंटिंग व्हिच इज काइंड ऑफ रेवोल्यूशनाइजिंग रॉकेट्स तो शनास दिमाग में आ रहे थे भूल नहीं जाऊँ तो मैं शेयर कर लू और क्वेश्चन के ऊपर तीन लोगों के हाथ रेज हुए हुए हैं हारिस ने सबसे पहले किया था हारिस से देखी फिर अनवर शाह और फिर नायला तो वन बाय वन हम अभी क्वेश्चन ले लें आजम या हम बाद में आई थिंक लेट्स डू इट नाउ अच्छा ठीक हारिस से देखी प्लीज बी ब्रीफ अपना क्वेश्चन बताइए हारिस यू ऑन कोई बात नहीं हर इसको स्किप करें अनवर शाह अचानक से बहुत सारे लोगों ने हाथ खड़े कर दिए जैसे ही लोगों को लगता कि सवाल आ प्लीज गो हेड अस्सलाम वालेकुम आजम साहब दिस इज रियली फैसिनेटिंग एंड आई सजेस्ट दैट इफ सिमिलर मीटिंग्स जूम मीटिंग्स कैन बी अरेंज एट स्कूल लेवल्स इन पाकिस्तान uh and can have larger audience that will uh, really spread and entice the the space exploration on the lighter side i belong to to a village where there are still some of our religious leaders that still think that no one has reached a uh, moon so i was just wondering if there is ever a space available on shenas uh space craft <laughs> i want to send one of our <laughs> religious guy on that moon on one way ticket i would say no comments <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know thank you, you very much thank thanks anwar i agree with you i think uh, yeah this as i said yeah, the one thing that brings twinkle kids eyes is space space is fascinating so we have to start them young us stage pe leke aaye and again as i said all of us who, who are in this field got inspired when we were very young aur wo cheeze hamare dimag mein rehti hain and they changes their life so i think there are pakistan mein talent ki koi kami nahi hai that i'm totally convinced so we have to start young i agree with you 100% thank you naila you're next uske baad noor fir fazia jameel Okay thank you assalamu alaikum everyone well thank you so much uh, for giving this fantastic uh, talk for me uh, i am a scientist more of medical scientist and uh, based in uk um, for me it was you know i was always fascinated by the skies and the space and everything and having with this hubble 
telescope, you see the what has been mentioned in the Quran, it finally come to light that we can see all these things. And uh, that is very nice. And it is thank you for organizing this very nice series. Hopefully you will continue with that. And I agree with what the previous uh, gentleman said that we need to take this to children, but uh, their talent is there. But the problem is there is no facilities. There is no education. So way to start how to build all this without just with 10, 20% people being able to get the education. So what is how possibly we can do this in Pakistan or start something like that when there's so many people don't even have the education or the facility to learn, although the talent is there. So uh, thanks, Naila. Uh, taking your last point, taking if you say if you start thinking okay, this thing is not there, that's not nothing will get happen. So uh, now we have come to our stage in life where we say, forget about everything. We are not going to depend on anybody else. Let's take one step at a time. हम अपनी इस domain के अंदर छोटी हालत में अगर एक बच्चे को लें या एक heel को लें and we can just do one thing at a time. Forget about changing the world and take that baby steps. It will work. Same same concept. TCF got started. I don't know. You know. I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, the Citizens Foundation. People said enough is enough. Education system. 25, 25 million kids are Pakistani kids are out of school. We cannot depend on it. Let's start. We'll make schools. We build it. Let the so as mashallah we have almost 300,000 kids in school because of that. Similarly, hospitals can there in this hospital. There are so many things happening in Pakistan. When people have said enough is enough. We're not going to depend on government. So. Our Aspire group found, uh, has been founded exactly on the same idea. Okay, we said, well, look, we are so many. We want to do something individually. We can only do so much. Collectively, we can do a lot more. So, collective, the platform has been created. Aspire, and I found some marvelous people in this team who are joining here with all common ambition to help Pakistan. And you know, we are turning the leaf one one leaf at a time, and I think it's worth it. Azam, can I add, please? Thank sure. you. I like to just yeah. add one more thing, Azam. You said it really well, but I also want to add that this whole concept of, you know, we, like for example, anybody who has a phone and an internet can upload the Zoom application and truly can hop onto this meeting, right? Because you can take a lot of people, uh, depending on your Zoom account, of course. But the point is that we bring this information home in a way that there isn't any barrier. You don't need a facility. You don't need. Right people sure. approval you just need people's willingness as as they're watching a bollywood movie they can also hop on this call as simple as that say bye so thank you right. thank you uh, you are right i mean i came on to that for this reason as well we are all doing individually but together we can make a difference so i will be very happy to Absolutely. take part in this in any way Well, thank Thanks. you, and thank for you. everybody that is here and listening, joining Aspire is really, really easy. Everybody can join. It is aspirepk.org, and uh, just go there and fill the form and start taking an action. And, you know, yeah, as, yeah we, we all believe in that. Noor, you are next, then Fawzia Jamil, then Faisal Zubair, um, Saqib Bali after that, Asim Siddiqui, and Faisal. Uh, please try to keep uh, your questions short and answers short. Please go ahead, move. And please don't forget me either. Uh, oh, oh, you're here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was. I I asked for you several times. So, uh, so, so Noor, before sorry, can I interject before you come in? Uh, Sayed Hassan has been uh, part of the space industry too. He has been working in Godard. Uh, his primary work is telemetry. Data collecting data. Once you get all these fascinating data from all these satellites, and uh, how does it go? How do we control all that? So he does that from a Goddard Space Center. So, uh, Sayyid Hasan, can you just spend a very a minute just to talk about what you do? Sorry, I called okay. you earlier, but you were you couldn't get you. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, God, I had uh, something going on. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, salam alaikum. Uh, sorry for Video? the uh, the delay. Can, uh, can you can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Uh, basically, my name is uh, Said Hassan. I started working as an internship um, 
um, in Edgardo Space Flight Center here in Maryland, close to DC. If you live in this area, uh, you know where that is. Uh, my primary uh, job is, um, is to do a ground tracking. And that's where I come in um, uh, because uh, once the uh, satellite is done and it's launched, uh, the moment it's launched, uh, we used to launch from Florida and Texas will, Houston will take it all the way up to the uh, orbit. And after orbit is done, the first thing we do is telemetry data to look at the uh, communication year and day and, and talk, to the, talk to the bird, make sure it's healthy. And once that's all done, then we start getting the data. And majority of the data, it, uh, because I worked on uh, weather-related satellites, so it's NOAA is one of our client, and of course, UCLA and all the big schools. Uh, we also have a very giant uh, research facility here, um, uh, Hopkins uh, APL, Applied Physics Lab. Uh, they are one of our, our client, and matter of fact, they have built quite a few of the component from it. So this is who I am. Ground tracking is my business. Um, not only a ground tracking, but I, I communicate with all the stations. So we have multiple stations. One of them uh, that I communicate with them is it's in Shumia, Alaska, mm -hmm. middle of nowhere. Then one in Italy, and then we had a uh, work with a um, two of the satellites I worked with called um, uh, three of the satellites actually. Um, it's the one of them had eleven uh, instrument, other one had seven instrument uh, called Terra, Terra and Aqua. Then you work with the uh, multiple universities, some in Japan, some in France. So that's what I do, tracking, getting the data, make sure the health of the bird is good and communicate with them. And we, time to time, we flip them. And that's the fun part. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, these ground track stations are all over the world because the satellite goes around. Uh, <clears throat> these are mostly either LEO or GEO. So once you have that, they need to get the data back to central position and the data to disseminate it right across the world. The to first from data to information, to create information out from the data. That's another big processing thing that's done. Goddard is the one which does. So most of the NOAA satellites are all the space uh, weather satellites that we have. Okay, thanks. Really? So Noor, Thank uh, please, aapka sawal tha, please sawal kare. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Haan, am I audible? Yes, yes, we can. So first of all, I would like to thank to everyone who hosted this incredible sessions. So uh, my question is, I have heard in one of the NASA's video on YouTube that they were showing like, you know, the first image uh, captured by James Webb Telescope. Jeez. They were, uh, you know, discussing about uh, a thing that how, like, you know, uh, there's a Carina Nebula Yes. They captured the picture of it. So they were discussing about the proportion of the minerals um, they found in that uh, nebula. I want yes. to ask, how do they know that how much, uh, like just imagine uh, potassium or calcium, how do they know that uh, how much per proportion of water or any other minerals it have? Like, like you know, these objects yes. are farther away from the um, telescope, but how do they yes. get the percentage? I'll tell you exactly how. In fact, uh, I have a better person. I'll ask Salman to answer that question. But the engineering-wise, we have a spectrum. We prism to him, spectrum, as I talked about that. But Salman, I think uh, I will, uh, I'll pass that question on to you to say, how do you detect what elements they are in such distant galaxies? Is the question. All right, so... Uh, thank you very much. Geologists are very easy to take the things and take the things. But astronomers are very difficult. So we know everything actually through light. And as we have said, through spectrum. Right? So there is a distribution. I know that which element we can identify. It, right? So what was your question original? That's actually a really interesting question. Ke, okay, question. even if we identify kar le, how do we know in what quantity they are available, mm -hmm. right? So there are different techniques hoti hai, and that is all about which is spectrum aapka hai. I mean, like, you know, right now it just looks like a squiggly line. But in that squiggly line, ke under, there is tremendous amount of detail. So for example, if that squiggly line is how big it is, what is its thickness? Kya hai? So this is how we can actually figure out how much material is absorbing light, 
right? So a lot of this stuff is absorption, yeah, emission either way, which basically means that you are seeing that atom or molecules basically absorbing or emitting light. So the amount, so the shape of that squiggly line spectrum will tell you how many atoms are there, and that can tell you. उसके जो अबंडेंस कितनी है एंड देन देर आर वेज अगेन दिस इज अ होल बिग फील्ड देर इज देर आर वेज इन विच यू कैन फिगर आउट के रिलेटिव टू हाइड्रोजन फॉर एग्जाम्पल विच इज द मोस्ट अबंडेंट एलिमेंट इन द यूनिवर्स बाकी एलिमेंट्स जो है देर इज एन एक्सपेक्टेड रेशियो एंड देन यू कैन फिगर आउट वेदर इट इज लो और हाई कंपेयर टू दैट सो दैट्स बेसिकली लाइक यू नो सिंपल एस्पेक्ट टू दैट डज इट आंसर यू क्वेश्चन थैंक यू सर Uh, sir, uh, I have another question. Um, do you also conduct um, sessions on university, like on campus? Because I want your session to be in my university. Currently, I'm enrolled in uh, BS Physics in Comsec University, Islamabad. Okay. Yes, we actually. In this, uh, sorry, I just wanted to add this. That there are lots of universities who are interested in uh, you know in getting these lectures on, and inshallah. part of uh, azam's vision as we start you know one of the big thing is to uh, basically inspire the younger generation to be in this uh, you know field to ye ek bada important part hoga hamara to thoda sa hame time de to hum inshallah we will be getting back and uh, you know and, and talking about ki ye kaise hoga lekin yes this is absolutely uh, an important thing बिल्कुल वो करेंगे एंड देन आई होप इंशाल्लाह टू विजिट पाकिस्तान लेटर दिस ईयर सो वील प्रोबेबली गो ऑन अ रोड शो एंड सबल की यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड टॉक अबाउट दिस सो दैट्स अनदर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच नेक्स्ट इज प्रोफेसर प्रोफेसर अनवर फिर साफ ही बदली जी हसन साहब थैंक यू सो मच इट्स अ ग्रेट प्लेजर डॉक्टर आजम सलमान साहब एंड द होल टीम इट वाज beautiful uh, lecture and uh, i cannot uh, you know put it in words it was very fascinating and uh, just amazing utterly um sorry i <laughs> video i'm just relaxing uh but uh, i i myself i'm from the aviation industry but not the space industry specifically uh, i'm a purdue graduate Achha. and i'm currently uh, working in uh, qatar for the airline here uh project i'm into project management so i work with boeing and all the our aviation uh, companies but uh, nothing like what you guys are doing mashallah the space and the uh, whole thing it is next level mashallah and we hope that your vision of uh, spreading all this knowledge and education to uh, our country men and children succeeds uh, that will be the best um I don't have any question I just wanted to come on and uh, thank you all uh, very much you're doing a great job Hasan bhai Aspire Pakistan please keep up the great work thank you so much thank you so much thank you uh, a quick quick question I'm sorry ji ye jo khasar andar sahab hain say Hasan bhai aapke paas inka email hoga because airframe engineers I'm hoping aapne jo padha hai usme you study airframe engineering so we need some help talk to you later inshallah thank you थैंक यू अच्छा कैसर जो हैं वो एस्पायर के मेंबर भी हैं और क्या कहते हैं अपना इनका कांटेक्ट इंफॉर्मेशन आपको यूट्यूब से मिल जाएगा ओके हुज नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर दिस ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी सर मैं क्वेश्चन पूछना चाहता हूँ उसके बेसिकली दो पार्ट है सर जी लाइक जब कंप्यूटर इन्वेंट हुआ था तो उस वक्त हमें ये अंदाजा नहीं था कि ये बाद में इस तरह बड़े बड़े फंट्रियर खोल देगा लाइक कंप्यूटर प्रोग्रामिंग ई कॉमर्स और लाइक जिस तरह एजुकेशन सिस्टम को कंप्यूटर ने इफेक्ट किया तो इट वॉज नॉट जस्ट ए कंप्यूटर उसने न्यू फ्रंटियर खोल खोल दिया आगे जाके तो मेरा क्वेश्चन का पहला पार्ट ये कि ये जो जेम वेब्स टेलीस्कोप है ये फ्यूचर में किस तरह की फ्रंटियर खोल सकता है साइंस के अंदर दूसरा पार्ट ये कि सर आपने जिस तरह लाइक लेक्चर के दूसरे पार्ट में स्पेस की प्राइवेटाइजेशन पे बात की कि दिस लाट ऑफ प्राइवेट कंपनी टेकिंग पार्ट इन स्पेस लाइक स्पेस एक्स लाइक ब्लू एरिजन आल्सो 
सर अगर हम इस परस्पेक्टिव में देखें एक पाकिस्तानी इंटरप्रेन्योर के लिए क्या इस टाइम कोई अपॉर्चुनिटी है लाइक स्पेस प्राइवेटाइजेशन में थैंक यू सो मच तो लेट मी टेक द लास्ट क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट जो आप पाकिस्तानी एंटरप्रेन्योर्स को आप देखें कौन सी फील्ड है जिन्होंने जो जिसको उन्होंने नई कवर किया है दे हैव डन एवरीथिंग स्पेस इज नथिंग न्यू स्पेस इज नथिंग डिफरेंट स्पेस इज नाउ वेल डेवलप के and there are a lot of pakistanis jo hain in fact uh, i know there's another one uh, who has doing some work on uh, s 3d manufacturing of rockets uh, as an as you talked about he is actually has a company he's a cfo of that company so there are a lot of there, there are people in uh, pakistanis who are doing uh, space um, policies ke upar space insurance ke andar there's another person there so yes absolutely totally yes there is th- this is uh, an area which is open to all and this there should be no barrier there is no the only barrier is our own mind but that should be taken out and that's it so bilkul sahi hai so <clears throat> absolutely yes is the answer thank you sir okay next is next is who asim siddiqui asim asim ajain assalam alaikum everybody uh, first of all thank you everyone everybody and attending uh, the event and then also for dr azam arastu to provide this amazing information to all of us uh, main sirf uh, second karunga jo azam arastu ne abhi comment kiya the the only barrier is us uh, regarding the space program um yes space program can you know can be a huge opportunity for us or usko simple steps mein agar hum log divide kar dein jis tarah azam arastu saab keh rahe the baby steps mein we can achieve a lot of different things simple example hum log electronics के ऊपर फोकस कर सकते हैं वी कैन फोकस ऑन एवियोनिक्स वी कैन फोकस ऑन जस्ट मेकिंग द पार्ट्स द स्पेशल पार्ट्स दैट गेट इन्वॉल्व इन मेकिंग दिस ह्यूज स्पेस प्रोग्राम तो इवन सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट जो पूरे सिस्टम्स को कंट्रोल कर रहे हैं हम लोग सिर्फ उसके ऊपर भी फोकस कर सकते हैं तो बेबी स्टेप्स के अंदर इस तरह के बहुत सारे स्टेप्स हैं एंड दैट्स वट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू शेयर एंड एनकरेज एवरीबडी टू गेट इन्वॉल्व so let me uh, get comments on your point and se pehle ka sawal tha ki jo hai how can we get involved aur government ka kya position hota hai see if you think through what the apollo program can there what the reason for apollo program what was the reason for shuttle program station program what they do is create this massive program jo ke it seems out of the world impossible but usse kya hota hai then you create teams and you have have to develop a lot of new technologies each of the program has completely changed the whole technological basis so what they've done with this particular one program government creates an engine us engine ki plus uske piche there are thousands of bogies that come along and pulled by that engine so to make that one project successful there has to be advancement in every field of science in materials constructions medicine uh computers communications and you, you name it and most of the technological developments that has come through in last 40 50 years you can see they have all, you can root trace back to some kind of space programs so space program provides an engine of growth for a whole bunch of technologies so it's don't look at a final project but is the, all the things that lead into it cha asad next in uske baad fahad hai mujhe ye samajh mein nahi aa raha ki navid ne kya technique azmai hai ki ye pehle aa gaye hain na ki najam ne haath pehle uthaya tha to wo hum baad mein puchhenge asad please assalam alaikum uh, first of all uh, main uh, bahut uh, appreciate karunga asan bhai aapko और थैंक्स करूंगा आजम साहब को कि इन टाइप का साइंटिस्ट से जो है हमें इंट्रोड्यूस कराया और हमसे बात हो सकती है सर बहुत शुक्रिया आपका मैं बस सिर्फ ये कहना चाहूंगा कि जो सबसे जो वीक एरिया है वो ये है कि हमारा जो यूथ है और जो 
जो जो बच्चे हैं वो अभी तक ये सम, उनको यकीन नहीं है कि हम ये सब कुछ कर सकते हैं यानी आप की आप तक वो पहुंच सकते हैं आप जैसा बन सकते हैं डॉक्टर सलाम बन सकते हैं तो देखें सबसे जो वीक मुझे लगता है वो ये है कि हमें उर्दू के अंदर हमारे पास जो है ना हमें इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं मिलती आप जैसे लोगों से हमें कॉन्टेक्ट नहीं हो सकता जो कि हो रहा है तो अगर आप जैसे लोगों की तरफ से अगर हमारी देखें नाइन्टी जो जो पॉपुलेशन है वो उर्दू जानती है समझती है सो so, अगर ये चीजें उर्दू के अंदर आ जाएं जो कि अभी जिक्र भी हुआ चैनल्स वगैरह का तो उससे जो है मैं समझता हूं कि बहुत अच्छा जो है वो एक इंप्रेशन डेवलप्ड हो सकता है जो हम सब की ख्वाहिश है सर एक और चीज है जो मेरा सवाल है सर अब तो फुटबॉल के साइज के सेटेलाइट्स बन रहे हैं सर कौन सा वीक एरिया है जिसकी जिस जो हमें पाकिस्तानी जो है वो गवर्नमेंट uh, लेवल पे प्राइवेट लेवल पे बहुत अच्छे सवाल भी हुए पीछे पीछे लोगों की तरफ से कि वो कौन से एरियाज हैं जिस जिसके ऊपर आपकी तरफ से सजेशन आए कि ये ये वीक एरिया हैं अब देखें वो होना ना होना या करना ना करना तो आपकी तरफ से जो है वो वो सारी चीजें हमारे तक पहुंचे ताकि हम उस पर काम करें ताकि हमारा यूथ उसके ऊपर जोर लगाए ताकि हमारी गवर्नमेंट अल्लाह करे कि वो उसकी तरफ देखे यानी जो जो सेक्टर्स हैं प्राइवेट सेक्टर है वो क्या वो क्या कर सकता है सर उसके लिए कुछ होना चाहिए थैंक यू ठीक है ठीक है दो सवाल है आपके पहला सवाल कमेंट है आई थिंक जो उर्दू के ताल्लुक से है बहुत अच्छा कमेंट है एंड बहुत ही जरूरी है आई एग्री विद यू के आ, हमने आजादी तो ली सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स अगो लेकिन हमने आई स्टिल थिंक कि हमने गोरे अंग्रेज को हटा के काले अंग्रेज बढ़ा दिए हमने उनकी गुलामी की आज तक और, और वो वो की है जमान के हिसाब से पाकिस्तान की जो है नॉट उर्दू में नहीं होने से वास्ट पॉपुलेशन है उसमें से कितने हमारे रिसोर्स है अब आई थिंक जो उसको चेंजेस हो रही हैं एंड आई एंड आई वॉज पर्टिकुलरली वेरी हैप्पी टू सी जो सलमान के जो वीडियोस हैं पूरी उर्दू में और अच्छी उर्दू में है तो दैट गैप हैज़ बीन फिल्ड एंड आई टोटली रिकगनाइज कि हम ये प्रोग्राम रखें और समटाइम अब जैसा मैं मुझे पाकिस्तान छोड़े पचास साल हो गए हैं उर्दू में समटाइम इतनी अच्छी रवानी नहीं होती लेकिन कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है मैं समझ लूँगा और बट आई टोटली एग्री कि ये चीज़ हमारे अपनी जबान में करना चाहिए एट द सेम टाइम जरूरी नहीं सिर्फ अपनी आप दोनों जबान सीखें बिकॉज अब पूरी इंफॉर्मेशन इंग्लिश में है तो उससे भी लें लेकिन मेक श्योर sure कि अब कोई बच्चा जबान के वजह से पीछे ना रहे आई टोटली अग्री विद एंड सेकेंड क्वेश्चन वॉज ऑन ऑन स्मॉल सैटेलाइट क्यूब सैट्स क्यूब सैट्स आई थिंक हैज बिकम दिस इज अब्सोलूट गोल्ड इन अपॉर्चुनिटी आपने कहा ना कि बिकॉज वी हैव हैव कार्ड ब्लॉक वी हैव नथिंग टू स्टार्ट इट्स अ गुड प्लेस टू स्टार्ट लाइक अगर मुझे आज वॉच बनाने की इंडस्ट्री लगानी है तो डू आई हैव टू स्टार्ट बिल्डिंग मैकेनिकल वॉच और पूरा लर्न फ्रॉम स्विस और गो इन टू इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वॉच एंड जम्प स्ट्रेट इन टू क्वार्ट तो हम एक्चुअली स्टेज पे हैं कि वी शेड जम्प राइड अक्रॉस एंड मूव इन टू स्मॉल सैटेलाइट जो किट फॉर्म में आती हैं उसमें बेसिकली इज गॉट ऑल पार्ट जो एंड देन वॉट यू डू इज यू यू बेक द सैटेलाइट एंड यू पुट डिफरेंट पेलोड आप एक्सपेरिमेंट करते जाए या ऑप्टिकल पेलो लगाए कुछ सेंसर लगा दें कुछ जाके मेजर करें सो दैट इज वन एरिया डू वेरी इजली बट द गैप दैट वी हैव इन पाकिस्तान विच वी रियली हैव वी आर वेरी टोटली डिपेंडेंट ऑन ऑन अदर कंट्रीज इज लॉन्च केपेबिलिटी वी डोंट हैव लॉन्च हम सैटेलाइट बना भी लेंगे तो हम किसी और के मुल्क के भरोसे बैठना है एंड वेन यू डू दैट देर आर नो नो अदर कंट्री वुड वॉन्ट अस टू डेवलप दिस थिंग तो ये सब बात चीज ऐसी है जो हमें करना है नो मैटर वॉट ये हमारे नेशनल सिक्योरिटी का मामला है तो ये इन बीचों में हमें कॉम्प्रोमाइज करना जरूरी नहीं है एंड द गैप दर आई फाइंड इज लॉन्च वेहीकल के एबिलिटी कमर्शियल लॉन्च वेहीकल के एबिलिटी थैंक यू आजम फहद हैं फिर नवीन हैं फिर नजम हैं हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी सर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू यू फॉर दिस मैग्निफिशिएंट वेबिनार एंड आई रियली अप्रिशिएट योर वर्क my question is about nasa's james webb telescope as this tremendous telescope has achieved unforeseen achievements 
such as collecting tangible data to correlate the existing data collected previously by Hubble Space Telescope. Basically, how James Webb Telescope was designed in such a way as compared to Hubble Space Telescope to give an absolute information and result about the exoplanet Webb's 96b or we can say Proxima Sanctuary b yes. uh, through the spectrum of life uh, given and distinct signature of clouds or let's say steamy atmosphere on particular planets similar to Earth. Again, this is a, a very good question and I, there are two parts of it. One is the engineering side and then the astronomical side, I'll, like, I'll have uh, Salman answer that. Engineering side, PA, ke, we had to be able to create a spacecraft which is we have very accurate. Which, so that's why it's almost six and a half, half meter size ka usko collecting area, hai, surface area. Hai. But the, to get into the infrared zone, you have to make it cold enough. So, us, us temperature ko ke, literally, you know, few degrees above Kelvin to keep your sensor that cold so you can get some sensor data which is that in, in deep infrared region was not easy. Uske liye, the engineering issues was creating this massive five layer sun shield, jo bilkul stable ho, usme bahut sari technologies hain. Usko banane mein bahut time laga. Plus the thing is ke, that particular system had to be folded back into a little area that so that it can put into launch vehicle and then unfold it back into space with all those minute, uh, you know, uh, things, you, every has to be timed so exactly that the coach is okay. And then the problem is, how do you build, even if you do that, how do you test it on ground? Start, ground with the gra uh, gravity here. Space with gravity nahi hai. So you have to create a gravity environment, no gravity environment on ground to be able to test it. Plus also temperatures. We have to create those differential temperatures about four to 500 degrees C to be able to test it on ground. Those were some absolute incredible technological engineering challenges with the ground kinder to, to make this act like this. That's why this is this is what distinguishes Hubble to, to James Webb. Is that I think the primary thing, the most difficult part was the thermal control system. And you talked about the the data that's coming up from, from them. Uh, I, I'll, I'll pass that part of it to, to Salman to answer that. Uh, thank you, Adam Saab. Uh, and that's a, again, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, your main cheese is astronomy. I mean, that is with light, right? But that's what we get. So, up, buddy, light bucket hogi, you can see more sensitive things, right? So, Hubble Space Telescope, you have ska, jo mirror size hai, that was around two and a half meters. Ye jo James Webb Space Telescope, hai, it's a little over six meters, right? So, actually, the way it works. James Webb Space Telescope is close to seven times, seven times. more sensitive than Hubble Space Telescope. Okay. So that's one reason why we can actually see more sensitive things. Second, it is working in the infrared. We can see certain things more easily than what Hubble did. Right? I mean, Hubble is a complementary thing. It's not that Hubble ko apne replace kar diya puri se. They are complementing each other. How do we see so clearly, for example, the uh, exoplanet ka spectrum hai compared to Hubble? Wajah, again, partly itna bada mirror hona, ke you can actually ha have enough light that you can actually make a distinction between starlight and that is passing through the atmosphere of an exoplanet. Or because it's infrared, mein hai, stars are a little bit fainter in the infrared than in the visible. So actually, you can get some of that information. Hubble ke paas, itni sensitivity nahi thi ke it could distinguish between what is the star and what is the atmosphere of an exoplanet. Magar James Webb Space Telescope can do that. Or agar, if I can just, 30 seconds, wo jo pehla bhi sawal tha ke what revolutionary thing James Webb Space Telescope is going to do, was well, we don't know. You get Hubble Space Telescope jo hai, it was designed for X number of projects, but one of the things was to measure the expansion of the universe. That was one of its key projects. And what it found was completely unexpected that the universe is not only not slowing down in expansion, but it is accelerating. 
Shalini. That result came out in 1998, and that is the dark energy that we know. And a couple of years ago, Nobel Prize was given. So, so the main big result from Hubble Space Telescope was not something that we expected. So, what will James Webb Space Telescope find? We don't know, and it will take many years to maximize the potential of James Webb Space Telescope. Good to see you. So, so uh, much. It's, it's, uh, I mean, we don't even know what we don't know. So Abhi when we when you are in that stage, se aage jahan aur bhi hai, uh, abhi ish ke intaha aur bhi hai. So James Webb say it is going to. इतनी चीजें हैं जो अभी व्हाट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू इज की जो चीजें हमने डिस्कवर की हैं थ्रू आर क्यूमुलेटिव नॉलेज ओवर सो मेनी इयर्स इंक्लूडिंग हब उसको हम वैलिडेट कर रहे हैं वी आर गेटिंग सम बेटर वर्जंस ऑफ दिस मोर बट इन दैट प्रोसेस वी विल बी वी विल बी फाइंडिंग लॉट ऑफ न्यू थिंग्स लॉट ऑफ न्यू थिंग्स जस्ट लाइक डार्क एनर्जी का दैट वाज अ फन फिनोमेनल थिंग सो वी डोंट वी डोंट नो व्हाट एल्स विल अभी तो अभी तो पार्टी शुरू हुई एज आई से अभी तो फर्स्ट पिक्चर्स आए एंड आई आई एम सो एक्साइटेड टू सी और भी क्या होगा बिल्कुल थैंक यू नवीद आपका है सवाल फिर नजम एंड तो कैपिटल इंटेंसिव गेम के लिए गवर्नमेंट अगर कोई विजन क्रिएट भी कर देती है हाउ दे गोइंग टू फंड इट सो पर आई वाज थिंकिंग सो इज द डेटा व्हिच इज कमिंग डाउन फ्रॉम दीस सैटेलाइट्स इज इट अवेलेबल इन पब्लिक डोमेन दैट वी कैन हैव यूनिवर्सिटीज स्टार्टेड ऑन क्रंचिंग दैट डेटा एंड मे बी सम अदर आईटी पीपल कैन गेट इन्वॉल्वड फॉर वेरी लो कॉस्ट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग सो दैट दे कैन बी कंट्रीब्यूटिंग एंड मे बी कंट्रीब्यूट बैक लाइक से आई नो that my colleagues back in atomic energy commission started collaborating with sir so they were able to send their people for training over there and they did some beta crunching and designing for them so something of those lines is space open to public that we can look or look at and to contribute or is it all encrypted and only available to a selected few um i think the data is available nasa ke projects uh, salman correct me if i'm wrong i think this is most of the data is available uh, public domain not but the thing is ke uh, you have to have some special tools to be able to figure out what the images are uh, raw raw data i don't know how much that is available but most of the information and uh, in some of the process data is definitely available with on nasa websites uh, uh, salman yeah. am i correct yeah right so you are absolutely right ke tamam data this is from james webb space yeah, any satellite from nasa yeah national science foundation those are available for free and james webb space telescope they are also putting raw data for free i would be a little careful with that little hesitant with that not because ke we cannot use it i think we don't just want to be a calculator right, right? i mean i think jis cheez ki hum baat kar rahe hain agar hamara maqsad ye hai ke okay can we contribute in any way okay i think there are ways in which we can calculate or do something anyways matlab ye hai ke unse kahe ke char plus char kya hai we will tell them we have enough people to tell them right magar if we want to do and i hope that's what we are talking about here in aspire kyunki naam jo hai wo aspire hai so i'm hoping that we are aspiring towards something bigger than that and if that is the case then we have to build the infrastructure that's the hope to understand what those results mean so that we can also utilize the results that are available right and i and i have to say there are no shortcuts i mean there are no short i mean these things one of the thing there is no silver bullet there is no simple answer of how we can get there in two years what we should think about and uh, azam saab you mentioned china china had a 10 year plan they had a 20 year plan right so what we need is a vision that can sustain itself there are no shortcuts so the question is okay after 5 years what is an achievable thing within that aspire domain what is an achievable thing that we can do get there that's not going to be 
putting a man on the moon for example like you know yeah, and i would not, i wouldn't okay. recommend that that is that would be something exactly so so like there there has been a focus hey, let's send a pakistani into space i don't understand what's the point of it if we are not involved in the pro- in the sort of like the development phase as well so same way i would say with astronomy i think we should start small small telescopes but with the ability to understand foundational astronomy and then built up from there and then the pressure come from within we need a bigger telescope we need data so da- there is no shortage of data in the world anymore i mean that's just like information we have so much data that is not the issue the issue is expertise yeah finding that needle so, in the history so no i agree with you the what i was thinking was devising some physics experiments getting some physicists in pakistan excited about space and giving them the ability to contribute so that could be if the data is available they can maybe find something that others may have missed and publish some papers out there how are you going to attract students so young people they want to work in that space they, do you want do you want them to come out of states and get educated there and start staying here or do we want that capability to come up in the country for that we need to have universities and school be able to have some kind of experiments which are meaningful for them that lead them into doing something for space program even if you wanted to copy the but I, i agree with you but again that does, there is uh, there's as i said there's no simple answer to it you have to build slowly you have to build infrastructure enough people enough critical you have to go past a critical mass both in terms of human capital intellectual capital to 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 be able to have a discussion and uh, in these topics and we are not even there yet so i think that's what the, that's the first step is to criti- uh, go uh, develop the critical mass so thank you bilkul theek hai thank you thank you uh, najam and fozia one after another please dr najam ji assalam alaikum so uh, mera question uh, might be a little bit basic but uh, i wanted to uh, ki agar aap thoda sa us pe uh, baat kar le ki what is the technology being used for communication between the uh, between satellite or between uh, your ro- a rocket or or a telescope and how is the data coming over is it a two way uh, thing or is it just one way और उसका डिले कितना होता है हमारा उसके बारे में अगर थोड़ी सी बात कर ले और उसके बाद मेरा एक और सेकंड क्वेश्चन है आई आई इफ गेट अ चांस सो सो कम्युनिकेशंस वाइज दिस जेम्स वेब कम्युनिकेटिंग वाइज इज नॉट प्रॉब्लम अगेन यू नो डिले एग्जैक्टली uh i don't know how many seconds uh, delay will that be um but <clears throat> the spacecraft is designed to be autonomous in the sense that you you send the commands and it doesn't have to be controlled in real time so there's no not many real time controllers uh, on spacecraft but uh, but the communications so it take is getting data and right now the way it is is it's on lagrange lagrange point way but is is uh, although it's a lagrange point but it's really not a point in space it, it space car goes into a halo orbit it's on is going in a halo orbit on the other side of the moon so the uh, the reason is halo is because the, there is a line of sight from the space car to earth all the time so it goes around the earth around the moon so it's direct communication with earth all the time that's why it's is is in the halo orbit and uh, we have standard uh, s band uh, ku band communication very high bit communication links which are well established to do that that's that's that is that is not an issue but the the trick was to perform that halo orbit around the moon so that's the moon so it goes around it and then the spacecraft has a direct vision over the moon to earth all the time and also that way is so far off earth and all of the devices so the is the heat does not go that you minimize the heat on the sun shield to on this side and have a very stable view so and it's always looking at the dark sky uh, on the other side that's how the is designed thank you um uh, bodhya 
नजम का क्वेश्चन अभी मेरे ख्याल में दोबारा हम आ जाएंगे नजम आपके पास तो तो हाथ जी मैं बाद में पूछ पूछ पहले यस ठीक है इंतजार करते करते सो गई कम्युनिकेशन डिले इट टेक्स एट मिनट ट्वेंटी सेकेंड फ्रॉम सन टू दर्थ फ्रॉम सन टू दर्थ यस so i think the only most difficult part on the communication side would come from wider you know where now it takes days or i don't know months to get the data right yeah for gmo gmo became complicated because jupiter was five times the distance so the dis- communication was for if you send a command from from ground to space craft it would take 45 minutes the command to go there say open a switch it will open it 45 minutes late and then say yes it has opened that data will come back so it will be 90 minutes round round trip for gmo that was a very comp- that's why it became so complicated to operate that but this one is l2 which is not that far it is it's not uh, i don't know it's the delay is in seconds not too much was here are you there aapne puchna hai sawal ya hum najam ke paas hain najam aap puchte hain apna dusra sawal ji mera sawal ye tha ki there are different things in space ke ji रॉकेट्स हैं टेलीस्कोप है है और आप सेटेलाइट्स हैं आई ऑल्सो हर्ड के वो इलॉन मस्क भी और कोई चाइना की कंपनी भी शायद कुछ काम कर रही है कि जी लो ऑर्बिटिंग सेटेलाइट्स हों सो फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान परस्पेक्टिव इज इट बेटर टू गो फ्रॉम लो ऑर्बिटिंग सेटेलाइट जिसमें कोई फोन कनेक्शन एंड इंटरनेट एक्सेस हो उस टाइप का या वट डू यू सी विच वन इज मोर सुटेबल फॉर पाकिस्तान एट दिस लेवल देखिए ऑर्बिट्स you know as i said uh hamara jo darwaza hai into space when we enter space officially it's about 120 150 miles as you when you cross that you're into you you into space what we call in astronomical circles you're out of the earth's gravity well once you earth's uh, gravity will me aa jate hain you space pe aa jate hain then you you can put satellites but the closer you are the problem is the closer you are to the earth you have to go around faster space station for example travels around the earth 17 and a half thousand miles a, a second so it's whizzing past earth that fast theek hai to isko so similarly jab kareebi hote hain all these satellites they go around so if i have a satellite which is in low earth a, a cube sat i it can come round on pakistan only for very few minutes because it just go past so that's why for for low earth you need many satellites so they keep going around so you have coverage on ground at a given time uh then you go further out most of the communication tv satellites are 38000 miles uh, kilometers ke hote hain where basically they go around the earth in 24 hours so they uh, essentially it's called geostationary orbit when you have an antenna you think a satellite is going around but earth is turning around one one day so basically it's locked with the satellite now you need but it's much cheaper to have there you can only do only do with one satellite here you have many so it's really a question of cost it's question of what communication you want what uh, what particular job you want so uske liye you, you design a satellite const- your your system for example if i want to measure pakistan ke water resources i want to measure for example fires in pakistan or floods in pakistan then i need to have ability to watch uh, watch over it all the time or at least being able to see once in 24 hours so depend karta hai ki kaisa aap kitni what's your cycle times that's how you design a spacecraft constellation wait acha ji sorry main ek baat kehna chahta hu ki fauzia ne message dala hua kiya hai ki unka mic ka issue hai aur humayun jo hain unhone kuch kehna cha rahe the agar aap unse puchna chahe to अच्छा अभी हमारे पास सलमान हमीर और फुरकान गेरन दोनों ने कोई अभी तक सवाल नहीं पूछा है हाथ उन्होंने रेज किया हुआ है जबकि नूर आसिम और और जो भी लोग हैं वो पहले से सवाल कर चुके हैं तो मैं ये रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि पहले सलमान हमीर को और फिर फुरकान को हम क्या कहते हैं अपना अपॉर्चुनिटी दें सलमान प्लीज वो है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू सो मच फॉर एवरी वन और मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि हमने ये इनिशियट तो ले लिया है ना कि एस्पायर मतलब के 
एवोल्यूशन लेके आएगा अबाउट स्पेस और इस तरह की थिंग्स के अंदर तो क्या हर यूनिवर्सिटीज के अंदर ऐसी फैसिलिटीज हैं जैसे अब जनूबी पंजाब के अंदर देख लें इस्लामी यूनिवर्सिटी के अंदर बाकी बड़ी यूनिवर्सिटीज के अंदर तो हैं बट इस तरह की यूनिवर्सिटीज के अंदर क्या वहाँ पे भी इस तरह की कोई चीजें की जाएंगी देखें किसी मुल्क में भी हर सिटी के अंदर हर चीज की केबिलिटी नहीं होती इनफैक्ट एक फैमिली में भी हर एक हर चीज का एक्सपर्ट नहीं होता तो व्हाट वी डू इसके एज ए कलेक्टिव सोसाइटी हम शेयर करते हैं कि भाई आप जो है इस चीज में एक्सपर्ट बन जाए आप इस चीज में एक्सपर्ट बन जाए आप तो आई थिंक पाकिस्तान की यूनिवर्सिटीज में आई सी के देर आर सो मेनी यूनिवर्सिटीज इन पाकिस्तान खाली मेकिंग यूनिवर्सिटीज डेल्प अस हमें वी नीड टू क्रिएट एजुकेशन एंड नॉलेज सिस्टम ताकि एंड देन वॉट वी डू वी शेयर कि भाई अच्छा हम इस पर्टिकुलर जोन में हैं वी शुड फोकस ऑन दीज सर्टन टेक्नोलॉजीज हम हम हमारा बेसिकली एग्रीकल्चरल बेस है वी शुड बी बेस्ड ऑन एग्रीकल्चर हम मेडिसिन के अंदर वी शुड डिवाइड कलेक्टिवली एंड इन अ सिस्टमेटिक वे डिवाइड कि कौन सी चीज़ें कहाँ हो रही हैं एंड क्रिएट सेंटर्स ऑफ एक्सेलेंस तो दैट्स हाउ आई सी वी कैन डू एंड दैट्स ट्रू दैट्स डन अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड हर कंट्री में दे डोंट हैव एवरी यूनिवर्सिटी डज इज नॉट गुड एट एवरीथिंग अदरवाइज इट इज नॉट वर्क सो दैट फ्रेमवर्क हैज टू बी सेट अप इन अ सिस्टमेटिक वे ताकि द कैपेबिलिटी हैज टू बी इन पाकिस्तान एज लॉन्ग एज देयर इन पाकिस्तान द टैलेंटेड पीपल शुड बी एबल टू गो विद इन पाकिस्तान एंड एंड डू द थिंग दैट दे वांट थैंक यू अच्छा गाइस इट इज 11:15 सो इट इज वेल ओवर 2 आवर्स uh and i know uh, we have chaas participants maujood hain isme um and that's uh, really really amazing um to khan aap sawal kar lijiye uske baad munir ne hath raise kiya hai i think after that we will conclude inshallah to khan please go ahead okay thank you yeah no, it's a great presentation my question is ye jo satellites hain you have so many different satellites uh, in different orbits so when a a vehicle space vehicle is going through these orbits is there a mechanism to avoid impact with the satellites or is that just left to chance no nothing is left to chance nothing can be left to chance because a uh, collision in space can be catastrophic so we have mapped and we have cataloged every object in space over a centimeter every object in every orbit every object every orbit so space station for example space station is this giant structure which is uh, one football pitch size is going around near earth so there are there are, and there are millions and millions of big pieces which are you know spent rocket parts spent abhi tak space mein we never recovered everything everything was spent in space and it was left there so we need to be we, we do a lot of avoidance when if you see a piece coming through we avoid we move around to to deflect from from that or we change for example solar rays are there we sometimes we turn the solar rays this way so those things can pass by or design the systems so they can at least tolerate hits by what we call micrometeorites and anything which is up to uh, of sub of sub uh, you know about a fraction of a centimeter can the system has to do sign ke taki wo agar ho to usse damage na ho sake but now itna junk jama hai space ke andar इतना जंक जमा है स्पेस में कि देर इज अनदर इंडस्ट्री दर इज अ मैसिव इंडस्ट्री देर हंड्रेड्स ऑफ कंपनीज कमिंग इन एंड दे आर पुटिंग कमर्शियल प्लांट्स टू डो क्लीन अप जॉब जस्ट लाइक हिमालय के आप हाइक करें वहाँ इतना कचरा है कि नाउ नाउ यूर गवर्नमेंट इज स्पेंडिंग लॉर ऑफ मनी टू टू जो गेट द डर्ट वहाँ एक किलोग्राम वापस लेके आए दे पे सो मच सो स्पेस इंडस्ट्री इज पेइंग अ लॉर ऑफ मनी स्पेशली द इंश्योरेंस कंपनी टू गेट द डर्ट एंड द जंक थिंग बैक फ्रॉम दैट सो space with this whole business is called space debris and there are lot of things available uh, and that has to so basic point is everything with above a centimeter or so is catalog okay thanks thank you thank you munir assalam alaikum everyone uh, so i just wanted to say thanks to all the team who organized this event uh, especially azam sahib Uh, who has done the wonderful presentation and Hassan who organized this event? So a lot of information as well as a lot of interesting questions. 
So I don't have any question. Just wanted to say thank you, team. Thanks all. Thank, thanks, Munir. Thank you. So, thank you, Munir. Um, behind the scene, बहुत सारे लोगों ने काम किया है इसके ऊपर क्या कहते हैं पूरी जो टीम है स्पाइस की उसने इसके ऊपर काम किया है लोगों तक पहुंचाना मैसेज को उसमें जमीला है मुदस्तर है शेजाना है फिर क्या कहते हैं अपना लार्ज टीम सिमरा है जिन्होंने उसको आगे पहुंचाया वेबसाइट के ऊपर और क्या कहते हैं मानूर है फैजान है तो दे इज यू नो बिग लिस्ट फिर जो आज इसके अंदर हेल्प कर रहे हैं अली अहमद हैं अपना नजम है जो पीछे से इसकी होस्टिंग के अंदर हेल्प कर रहे हैं तो यू नो सो ऑल दीज पीपल हैव प्लेड अ रोल इन ब्रिंगिंग अस दिस पार्ट लेकिन सबसे बड़ा क्रेडिट तो डॉक्टर आजम को जाता है कि उन्होंने इस सारे को इन्विजन किया इस सारे को क्या कहते हैं अपना लेके चल रहे हैं और मेरी ख्वाहिश है इसकी कंक्लूजन के अंदर के आजम अगर हम जो विजन आप लेके चलना चाहते हैं पाकिस्तान के कमर्शियल स्पेस प्रोग्राम के हवाले से कि अगर उसके ऊपर हम एक कोई वर्किंग ग्रुप बना लें और उसको विजन को थोड़ा सा क्रिस्टलाइज करें और उसके बाद उसके शॉर्ट टर्म मीडियम टर्म एंड लॉन्ग टर्म जो ऑब्जेक्टिव गोल्स हैं उनको डिफाइन करें आम, और वो क्लैरिटी लोगों को प्रोवाइड करें कि ये कैसे हो सकता है क्योंकि मेरे ख्याल में किसी ने सवाल में कहा था कि असल मसला बिलीव का है कि इंसान जब ये बिलीव ही नहीं करता कि वो कोई काम कर सकता है तो वो उस काम के लिए बाहर भी नहीं करता और ये बिलीव करना कि हम भी डॉक्टर आजम रसू जैसे हो सकते हैं हम भी जो है वो क्या कहते हैं अपना इन साइंटिस्ट तरह हो सकते हैं वो एक बड़ा मुश्किल सा काम तो वो बिलीव कैसे क्रिएट किया जाएगा पहले उनको इस जगह के ऊपर पहुंचाना टैलेंट को कि वो कुछ कर सकते हैं छोटे स्टेप्स बेबी स्टेप्स वो कौन से हैं ये सब जो है ना इसको लॉर्ड ऑफ एफर्ट तो मेरी रिक्वेस्ट ये होगी सब स्पेस साइंटिस्ट से एस्ट्रोनमर से के क्या कहते हैं अपना इसको प्लीज क्या कहते हैं इस पर काम करें और इसको क्रिस्टलाइज करके लोगों के सामने लेकर आए ताकि लोगों को बिलीव लोगों में बिलीव पैदा हो कि हम ये कर सकते हैं यही सबसे मेरे ख्याल में पहला बड़ा स्टेप है स्टेप छोटा लेकिन है बहुत बड़ा नो आई एग्री सो दिस so we have to develop a space policy this is what uh, it's hard to talk about that in just few minutes here but it has Bill. to be documented in a proper way so i did the same thing i, I was working a lot with australian government uh, with a boeing and australia co- collaboration uh, so i spent many years with australia on various number of projects one thing they lacked was a space uh, access to space and they had no space program so you also truly helped develop the whole space policy space program for them and now they have adopted it as a country and now they are they are having several space program that they are now actually implementing so um uh, yes, along the same lines i think i'll, I'll do that for pakistan and this is what i'm trying to build uh, taking into account pakistan's future pakistan resources hamara uh, and again don't have to start everything from scratch taking where it is take the technology as it is today and hamare environment mein hamare ecosystem mein how do we make it flourish that's what i'm putting it together and adam i would like to join you this is navid sure same here i'll i'll love to help thank you um, everyone all our whole uh, thank you thank you so much shukriya bahut bahut for everybody <laughs> एक सवाल कई लोगों ने पूछा है कि इसकी रिकॉर्डिंग क्या और आपकी प्रेजेंटेशन मिल सकती है और क्या रिकॉर्डिंग इसकी भेजी जाएगी ईमेल की जाएगी उसके बारे में हसन रिकॉर्डिंग ईमेल की जाएगी जी जी रिकॉर्डिंग ईमेल की जाएगी और जो डॉक्टर साहब ने जो शेयर किया है स्क्रीन के ऊपर वो लोगों को मिलेगा लेकिन हमारा कोई प्लान डेक को क्या कहते हैं रिलीज करने का नहीं अनलेस के अगर आप चाहें तो सब तो हिम लेकिन हमारा ऐसा कोई Okay. If you want, I mean, like, if you want some some sections of that, I can I can certainly send it to you. But I didn't we didn't plan to submit because these are yeah. a lot of a lot of them were talking charts. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I have a lot more material. But I, I we didn't plan to disseminate the the charts to everybody. But the recording yeah. is available. But if any anybody has, this is just like I have my quest my contact number. Hey, I have. 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 I have
reach out to me at any given time i'm most uh, i will be glad to able to help out kisi qisam ka sawal jo ab new ho sake baad mein puchna hai or uh, anything about astronomy i'll forward it to salman or any other questions about launch vehicles uh, cube sats commercial satellites astronomy uh, infrastructure please throw it to me i'll do my best to answer the question ठीक है विद दैट आई थिंक मैं अलामा अकबर के के शेर के साथ ही इसको एंड करूंगा क्योंकि इट्स रियली रियली इंपॉर्टेंट कि होते नहीं क्यों कुछ किस तरह हुआ उन तेरा निश्चर तहकीक होते नहीं क्यों कुछ सितारों के जिगर चाक तो अब सितारों के जिगर चाक करने का वक्त आया है इनशाला वो भी करेंगे ठीक है जी थैंक यू एवरी बहुत शुक्रिया तमाम गेस्ट का बहुत शुक्रिया डॉक्टर आजम रसू आपका बहुत शुक्रिया सब लोगों के आने का अल्लाह अल्लाह